Alex, I have never seen an empty tube of Vaseline. I d- what is going on right now? Loyalty. Yo, bro, what? That's, that's loyalty. Wait. <laughs> Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry, guys. I just need to like catch my my breath for a second. I just like don't know what's going on. So please tune into the YouTube. Alex has a big ass tub of Vaseline. It's empty. It's like literally clean and empty. I'm so is freaked that, out right now. Is that racist? No, that's Reggie, not racist. Reggie, are you saying are you saying Alex got a big lips because he's black? No, I literally what? never so said how your brain that. work like you that? You always make it weird, Pierre. Anyway, yeah. how, how your brain work like that? Nah, so two things because well, no, but and like if you're. <laughs> Talk about. If uh, you're a loyal need to know her, you know yeah. number one, Alex loves his bliss text, the I cute do. little bliss text. I'm cheating today. And then second, you know Vaseline, you only you only need a tiny bit. Like you need a little <laughs> bit on your fingernail, just put over your lips and then boom. But what is what is going on here? Is yeah. it a multi-purpose Vaseline that like you use it for your lips, <laughs> yeah. your elbows, the beard. your knuckles? Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, it's like, a beard thing? Yeah, it's a beard thing, lip thing. Loop. You could you could say that. Okay. No, no, I heard That's it's like Aisley, I, heard, right? I mean from <laughs> from my uh anonymous sources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They say Vaseline is too thick to use as lube, so it's not really a lube. Like real it's, fuckers know. It's a <laughs> Oh shit. Well, it's a lubricant. Not me, my source. <laughs> no, I, I'm with you, but it is a lubricant. But you know, I, I finish my cases of Vaseline and I finish my my little compartments of Blistex because I'm a loyal person, y'all. I'm you want to know how much you tell me? I'm scared of you. You scared of me? I'm afraid of this you. Is so that, crazy. Now you really gonna get afraid. You want to see what I still use? Wired headphones. Oh, now, now, if you use wired headphones uh-huh. and go through all of your petroleum jelly till it till it's finished, mm-hmm. you're just a loyal person. Longevity. Longevity. You don't, okay. you want to see it through, all right? You want to go all the way through with it. Jay Coca learned something from me. It, you know what? Like threw me off. I think it's because if we saw the progression of you using the yeah. Vaseline every week, like yeah. you bring it in, like it, little by little, <laughs> it's going down. But you just like brought it out. Yeah. Do you let people borrow your Vaseline? No. You want the truth or the lie? Hell no, man. I want the truth. You want the truth? Yeah. Like if I was Ashley <laughs> right now, yeah. and nobody had lotion mm-hmm. on the premises, mm-hmm. and I came to you, my yeah. good brother Alex, and yeah. hey man. I really got to like shine it up. <laughs> Are you going to hold me down and let me use your Vaseline? Where would you put it? Knuckles. Put it on your knuckles? knuckles? Yeah, put it on my hands. My knuckles is cold. <laughs> you know, we get, we get a little bit ashy in the winter okay. time. So if I really needed you to hold me down for the camera. Yeah. Because my shit is in 4K. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, shout out I to can Pierre. See that from here. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> oh no, so you really need some? I'm just, I might. I might. I'm, I'm looking I might. At you. I'm you see looking. what I'm saying? I'm Wait, your hands don't look dry. They look nice. Nah, I don't nah. get dry. I ain't you told lie. me you don't get ashy. I don't. I don't. Oh, yeah. That's a lie. I don't. Y'all are lying. Because he's. What do I get ashy? I'm ashy. There's a little white. <laughs> white. Ash? There's a little white. No, I know. It There's no ash. ash. You black, and I see some white. So <laughs> where's the ash? And that on that forefinger. Oh my god. <laughs> can I use your Vaseline if I'm ashy? Yes, absolutely. You can use it. Okay. No, no, but nah. I would have to take the Vaseline out for you and put some on my finger, then transfer it to you. You're not putting your fingers in my Vaseline. Or, or mm. you, I got to see you wash your hands before you put your, dip your fingers in the thing. Nah, no, still, even though. Nah, that's, that's crazy. Nah, it's not crazy. You got to be a man of the people. You good on my Vaseline anytime. I appreciate it. Pull up, man. I appreciate it. You're my God. I appreciate it. You feel me? Yeah. I ain't mad. Strangers. At Eh, maybe, I don't know. It's like, <laughs> nah, but it's just loyalty, man. Okay, I'm not mad at that. It's loyalty. I, Wait, that, that, last, is, that is impressive. Yeah, that last. is impressive. I'm still not over it, but whatever. How Wait, long I have you had that? I've had this probably seven months. Seven, eight months. You're an alien. Mm-hmm. I am. Mm-hmm. You're an alien. When I used to work with Joe, he made fun of my fucking Blistex too. Really? Yeah. No, but that's understandable. That's yeah. for your lips. It's a little cute little thing. But so this is a full size tub. Like I don't, <laughs> I don't. I feel like I have the same one since I was like twelve years old. First Wait. of all, you should. That's not a carry on. Like that's not a <laughs> yes, carry. Like if you put the on the, at the airport. <laughs> like if you walked in the airport with that, they would have made you throw it out because it's, it's larger than yeah, it's larger than like how many lo- ounces, bro. Put in your luggage. Like you're not supposed to walk around with that <laughs> amount of Vaseline. That's what you really need. Diddy might have fucked with you. No, he didn't. No, and don't put that hey. down. No, it. no, I'm saying he might have like vibe with your energy. Yeah, say the way like that you that, like to be but lubed up. No, no, no. At no. any time it could go down no. when it, you're lubed up. No, and, and, and just like that, you see, that's your problem. That's your problem. It's my problem. That you want to walk talking, around with a gallon of Vaseline and use it all in seven months. What the fuck? This know, problem? Today, today, you might be the problem. I don't I'm know. the problem. All right, this will me be crazy. dry. This will me be. So y'all don't finish things? No, I don't. <laughs> Things that aren't supposed to be finished, like they don't market Vaseline for no. you to finish it. They market it for you to use it, yeah. then lose it, <laughs> right? Or get some hair in it or some shit. It's like, ew, you, I don't want to use You just told this. me this thing is so large, right? I've never seen How could empty. you lose something like this, Avon? I've never you seen You shouldn't carry no, anything like, like that around with you. It's just like a never, Vaseline is like a never ending thing, but somehow you finished it. Like, it's weird. It, like I proved that it ends. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
I love how like yeah. he's a strange one here. Like we're all against him. He's clearly in the wrong here, but he tries to manipulate it on us, and they're like, "Wow, what? so you never finished y'all anything in your life?" That's what I'm saying. Y'all mad at me because y'all don't finish the things y'all buy. Oh I, get my, I, get, I get my money's worth. I finish things like <laughs> I finish things like deodorant or like lotion. Facts. Okay, right. Yeah. I finish things like this is like lotion toothpaste. Right? Okay, this is good. so crazy. I'm gonna take a picture of that. I finished the things <laughs> I'm supposed to finish. That's you the know, cover like, <laughs> that, that reminds me of all the women who drive around with the treads on their tires. <laughs> Wait, what does that Wait. mean? You mean they're missing the thread? <laughs> yes. Like Wait, with, around. with the treads? Without. I'm sorry. Right, without without the treads on the tire. And they just rolling with them bold tires just on it. Rolling with the top of my head <laughs> on so their stupid. fucking car. Yeah. I don't even know what this means, but whatever. So basically, but you the, know what he has treading, a point. Yeah, yeah. Because with those tires, they really got their money's worth out of it. <laughs> and just like Alex, they got their money's yeah. worth. They're dangerous. Damn, I didn't know y'all didn't finish things. That's new. Alex, <laughs> that's not gonna work on us. But I just have one, one, one quick, quick, quick yeah. thing, and then we can introduce those. But like yeah. when Alex mentioned, like, oh, put this is too big, like put it in your luggage. Yeah. I have like this very, very big anxiety. I love to travel. I'm literally going to Brazil next month. Hey, but hey. I cannot. Um, do you guys are, are you guys like check bags people or carry on people? Both. <laughs> I cannot yeah. like have a checked bag because I'm always scared that's gonna get lost. Like, mm. I'd rather, like, not go on the trip than have a check bag. So, you really? want to know a secret? This is what you do. You get an air tag and you hide it in your luggage if you check it in. I mean, it's still lost and in the middle of Ireland. What am I going to do? <laughs> you got to go find a mobster <laughs> like, now. Now you got to go no, to the I know, Ireland mobster. I know exactly where the check bag is, but it's, like, lost now. Like How yeah. light do you pack if right. you never have a check bag? I'm a very good packer. Like, I could fit, like, 17 outfits into, like, my carry-on. Because I know I have, like, uh, what are they called? Like, the compartment thingies? Yeah. I forgot yeah. what they're like called. Like the suction things? Oh, what are they called? But, yeah. Like the yeah, whatever. Must but be yeah. nice. Sucks me, the air out the back. Yeah. Me and Savon ain't skinny. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, so yeah, when yeah, we pack yeah. some shit, that that bag gonna fill up. <laughs> and <laughs> if I'm being honest, I'm a nigga. <laughs> so I mean? got like six pairs of sneakers in the oh, suitcase. Yeah. Oh sure. yeah. Only and I like only two wear two. Fit, yeah. yeah, I only wear For two. Sure. But For somehow sure. I get six in my suitcase yeah. and I only wear two on whatever trip I'm going on. But you guys like not worry that's gonna get lost at all? No. Th really? Their job is to not lose my shit. But they, but you, but they lose shit all the time. Even didn't Joe start a podcast episode like they a few him. months ago? He's rich. Yeah, they took him. He <laughs> probably was traveling with Louis Vuitton luggage. Like, okay, well, like, I'm gonna Louis? rob him too Take if I work that TSA. Yeah. Even, <laughs> even, a, even a regular person, like I know mad friends who've gotten their like luggage like okay. lost. So I feel like it's a common thing. Now, now, yeah, we using, gotta ask. No, we they, gotta ask the they, real question. Ah, uh, they're using fly luggage. That's what. No, no. What airline are they flying? Mm. I'm a Delta girly. See, so Jet you're Blue. good. So you should be fine. Yeah. JetBlue, Delta, American I think you're good. Airlines. American. There's other yeah. ones where your shit might go missing. Yeah, and I don't understand the purpose of a really fly piece of luggage. Me either. Because you're essentially going to put it on the merry-go-round, and somebody going to look at it, either the staff or other people. But you look so cute traveling with That's it. That's the problem, <laughs> that, and that'd be the problem. For that little two seconds that you walk in in that little airport lobby... Yeah. It's gonna go right into the trunk once you leave the airport, and it gets scratched up. For me, I just believe in quality of life. Like when you're out and about, like let's yeah. say I have a cute tracksuit on, you're like, "Why are you getting so dressed up to dress, to like work out?" I'm like, "I just, you know, I like nice looking things." But uh, by the way, it, it's called packing cubes. Packing the thing. cubes. I, it was bothering uh. me that I didn't think of it, but yeah, because of that, mm. everything you could fit like three times more things. So please, I do get, it. I feel it. I just like durable items. <laughs> Like you're when flying, you see that? You like see, that's Vaseline. why I'm still around. You see that, right? I'm glad you paying attention. Y'all are sick individuals. What's going on, y'all? It's the Needs to Know Podcast. Welcome back or welcome to the Needs to Know Podcast. We have a ton to talk about today. Mm -hmm. uh, some highs, some lows, some Chill. in betweens, but thank y'all for being with us. I go by the name Savon, S A V O N. You feel what I'm saying? Uh, the N stands for NBA because the NBA is back. I am extremely that is, happy. That's correct. Same. I cannot wait to win some more money. Shout yeah. out to all Ooh. the good. Good people you be that cracking. bet. You be cracking. You get what I'm saying? I've, send, I, yeah. send some though. I'm not. I do. Uh, I send. I he do. Shares it. No, he shares it. I, I, thank you. All right, send I, some more. I've been sending them, <laughs> right? But the right. thing with betting yeah. is, I feel really guilty when you guys lose and when I win. Don't do that because with me. We know, we know the risk, though. It's not your fault. It either. is a risk. Don't do that with me. I will waste money for you. Speaking of that risk, I am thinking about starting like a little Discord where I'm giving do out it, plays. Definitely do it. I'm thinking about giving away the plays. No, no, because you're one of these people that you would assume you're a part of a group with the way you hit. I don't. I, I just, know. It's all in my head. From the brain. Yeah. I think I'm a genius. I know, it's, I, know it's, I know it's Savon's special God-given talent. I tell him this every time he wins. Yeah. Like, and I, I've been talent. really, really winning in the NFL. So the S-A-V-O-N 
stands for NFL, NBA. Whoever wants to give me their monies, I'll take that. I think, I think this will be very good for you because you're already like in it. I don't know if you were meant to do it, but your branding is very like we know you win a lot yeah, on these facts. like FanDuel. So you should like the moment you announce it, you're going to get mad people joining it. I feel really guilty for winning this last time because for whatever reason, it? no, not even for whatever reason. <laughs> We're going over the budgets and the financials and the needs to no know podcast oh, and the business. Yeah, yeah. And so yeah. Alex and I are very transparent with all of our business. Oh, man. And so I did have to do a 4 a.m. transfer from the needs to no know account to my personal account. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yeah, listen I did. to Walt. Wait, wait, wait. But I, I, <laughs> listen I to fucked Walt. up. I really did. He so tried. Oh, what he, happened was. You did it on purpose? I didn't know. Now I'm thinking about it on purpose. It was an accident. You was trying to shit on me? No. <laughs> yeah, you was trying to shit on I, me. I didn't do it for you. Reggie's in shock. Wait, no, I, I, I don't understand what's happening. Reggie. He hates Is he the, using our need to know funds to fund his FanDuel no, career? The complete opposite. The he complete tells opposite. us that, hey, guys, by mistake. <laughs> All of my earnings went to the need to know account, so I'm gonna have to, you know, take it from here now and transfer to myself. Oh, like snatch it back. But the thing is, I was able to see. <laughs> what was it? Like 20 bands? It, it wasn't 20, but it was some bands. Oh my god, what was it? In TI? Oh like, my was god, it? you what, was what, trying to shit on us. Nah, man, I was trying to inspire. Because you, no, you ain't text back. You was trying to shit on us. I tried to inspire you by seeing that large oh, transfer amount. You ill. The flip is crazy. You ill. You hear niggas right? Yo, you can't bet That's like so me, annoying. but if you could bet like me, this. No, nah, it, it was fucked up. It was an accident. It was an accident. No, no, but I'm sorry. Like, NBA season's back. Knowing Savon, it might not have been an accident. He did it on purpose just no, so he could flex on us. He tried to shit on me. I would never <laughs> put that much money. My bets is that bad? Anywhere, accidentally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me yeah. see your bets, actually. Nah, my shit's no good right now. Nah, they ain't no good right now? <laughs> my shit's ain't going good right Okay, all right. Well, you can sign up to my Discord when I drop the <laughs> link. Uh, right, but yeah, right. like I said, I go by the name Savon, man. Yo, what up, y'all? It's your boy, A, as always. The Paco Robo and Poppy. Never alone, always with the posse. Hey, guys, it's me, Reggie. Back here. Feeling very blessed, but this week is a sad week for me because I'm officially last in the Need to Know Instagram Baddies rankings. Oh, my God. Yeah. Um, That's so not true. I, I officially fell to fourth place because Pierre's included, so Savon's in first place. I forgot how many Pierre's have. Pierre's has a lot of followers, and this week, Alex reached 10K <laughs> followers, and me, leaving me in the congrats, dust. Congrats, congrats, Let's congrats. Let's give it up for my brother. No he, he's, up, he's, he's on my tail, ladies don't and gentlemen. Don't, that's All right, he's on my oh tail, my God, ladies you're and gentlemen. You're on the road this week. Holy shit. <laughs> you're on the road. You're what trying you? to shit on me again. <laughs> no, no, don't you have like 18K or some shit like that? first place. No, I love it. What the fuck? You were behind me, Jay. He's pulling ahead, ladies. That's mad funny. So I'm the least, you know, leaving me in the dust. I only have 300 followers on Instagram. But you know what's crazy, though? She probably gets the most engagement. Nah, facts. <laughs> I was going to say, okay, facts. I'm joking. I don't care about followers because my engagement facts. is mad good. Yeah. Oh, like, if we being honest, I get the least engagement. Why is that? You have know. the most followers. You said it. I don't want to bring it up. That was the truth. I don't give a fuck. with them niggas. Nah, they just wait, that's a lie. Me. You get the most engagement. I really don't. Well, I mean, not no, the look most. at his comments. Nah, I believe him. Yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm, I'm with my boy on this one. You have to check lying. my DMs. And still, I think I'm that the last is, page. Now, nah, that's no, where no, okay. I still think I'm the last page. You might be for, oh, nah. I don't want to get Who, it. Huh? I'm not. Nah, you with Reggie in first. For, for sure. For DMs. No, not nah, DMs. Not, no? not DMs. I so save on it first. They respect your DMs? I think my I, likes I and that. comments to follower ratio is the best on the pod. No, Abs you know, for no sure. Offense. You got that. No, for but sure. But it's because sure. I'm a woman. You know girls gas each other up. For sure. But for in sure. terms of offline engagement, I don't know. These fellas, I don't know. Yo, y'all yo, good in here <laughs> It might be good. Might fellas be good. meaning I'm not going to lie. They be engaging too much in there, though. ain't good. <laughs> like, yeah. they, they engage about yeah. his engagement. That's how I know they engage in your <laughs> shit. That's not true. It's okay. not. <laughs> <laughs> but before we move on to introduce the man with the plan behind the camp here, uh, hold on. I just got a few shout outs to yeah. our Patreon community. Thank you guys yeah. so much. We put out really good content there for you guys. We get deep, we get very funny, giggly. We like It's a great community over there. Need to know.com slash, uh, no, no, no. <laughs> Patreon.com slash need to know. Yeah. But here are some shout outs to the people we appreciate Eric, Nick. Nick, Kelson, Heather, Tyrone, Jason, and DZ Welcome are to the game. one of our new sign-ups, so you can get a shout-out too. Please sign up. Oh, and yeah. Pierre, passing over to you. Yo, what's up? What's up? <laughs> I like to start the energy high just because, you know what I mean? It, it makes no sense not to. But yeah, what's up, people? Glad uh, glad to be here this week. P. What's yeah. good, my guy? Chilling, 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 chilling. Um, yeah, so I, I guess we can kind of get the sad news out of the way first. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, a, a, a legend, especially for our generation, Liam Payne, One Direction. Band member. Uh, Am I that out of the loop that I didn't know how emphatic he was? Like, I knew One oh, Direction. Wait. They were okay. a thing. I knew One Direction was a big thing. Okay, I, at least you yeah. knew that. I'm yeah, that's what you One need Direction. to know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that they were a big thing um, collectively, but 
especially when you're so young and you pass away so sudden, so soon, something like this. It was really tragic. The first reports came out that he fell off of a balcony in his hotel. And so obviously when anything like that happens so sudden, it's super sad and it's super mm-hmm. tragic regardless of everything. So we do want to start there. I know there's a lot of people who may be hidden, closeted, One Direction fans. I see you. I acknowledge you. you um, I've dated women who are real big fans of this group, so that is how I understand the impact that how they had. How they song had. go? Oh, oh, oh. That's they shit? Girl, what? you know you beautiful. Oh, that's oh, yes, they yes, shit? Yes, yes, you that's are right. That's they right, shit? Yeah. I'm oh, <coughs> I got it. <laughs> okay. Look at me. That's a point for me. Super tapped I in. love okay. One Direction. I'm definitely like that era, like the boy band era, so I was very upset. They definitely had some slaps, yeah. One, di- One Direction. We have not seen a boy band like this again since then. Lele. You know You're this one, Come on. I don't know it. It's how past the night Never heard changes. It. I feel alone. Everything that you ever Just dreamed let it happen, of. Alex. You, you don't know this? I feel alone. All I right. don't know well, it. It's all good. It's all good. We do want to start there. I feel alone. I know that's very mm-hmm. important, especially to our generation. Um, mm-hmm. And what I will say, if you're going to go... Yo. Oh. Oh, my Yo. God. oh God! I just Yo. want to mention, by the way, he Man. was 31 when he passed, so really 31. hits home because we're all around that age. It but does. wherever Savon's about to take us, put on your seatbelts, guys. No, 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 no! I'm not taking this nowhere. I just want you to just have fun during life. <laughs> <Save> <laughs> yeah, no, you know, I'm not mad at him saying that. <laughs> but what? What do you? Well, how did he? What is that rude? Well, how did he go? Out? How did he? <laughs> he went out. Mm. Oh my God! Tusi. <laughs> I'm just saying. It seemed like he had a good time. He was living his life. Mm. He, f- the finest of hotels yeah. in a different country. Fuck. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that's fire. <laughs> no, because I feel like. He was using well, his I, don't, I don't know him, though. but like he was using a lot of drugs because he was like deeply troubled. So I don't think that's a good thing to celebrate, you know? Mm, he was but, trying to. But Savon's message of like, yo, have fun, be wild, like that, I obviously agree with, you know? Okay. Live life. So y'all are more familiar with One Direction than me, right? Okay. What so. was this split about? Do you guys know of the internal <laughs> beef that was had in between the group? I don't know anything. You gotta so. ask Shorty. I dated. She told me all that shit. I oh, don't shit. know. Oh, Did you know? Do you know? You don't remember when she like what she when she was telling you? Yeah, I do. She was real, just passionate about the group and like egos. And, okay. Uh, probably okay. Typical you know, group stuff. Group you know. Yeah, yeah, like there was two guys who were like. The, the quote unquote leaders, the heartthrobs of the, the band. Harry? <gasps> Harry Styles. Harry. I know Zane. Was it Zane? And Zane. Oh, I, I know Zane. Those were the two. I was a Zane girly. I was you get what I'm saying? Oh, okay, so, okay, okay. And you know, you just get older and life pulls you in different directions. And yeah, so I'm, I'm sure um, it, there was reports that his label actually dropped him not too long ago. So maybe that could have been a reason why. Um, Liam? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. So that could have been like a trigger. Yeah. It could have been a trigger. And we all know how this industry kind of chews you up and spits you out. And mm-hmm. when you're no longer that guy, when the, the the record labels aren't pumping money into your budget anymore, yeah. it can affect you, especially when you're at the top of the mountain. Mm-hmm. And One Direction really was at the top of the mountain mm-hmm. at some point for them to kind of, you know, have that type of fall from grace. And yeah. then it didn't seem like he landed on his feet from a musical standpoint. If anybody knows any different, please inform me. But I do know Harry Styles and Zayn, those two guys kind of found that lane and found success outside of the group and some of the other group members kind of struggled and this clearly could have been a direct cause of that. And, um, not, and not for nothing. But he did his thing. I want my pop stars to do drugs. You feel what I'm saying? But Wait. I want them to do it in a safe manner. Mm-hmm. I heard that he was locked in it where well, he was basically telling staff members not to come to his room for about a week. I also oh, know- He was having a great time. He was having a great time, right? He's by himself and the staff is leaving him be. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also hear that the authorities out there are assuming that uh, members, staff members of the hotel supplied him with these drugs. Oh yeah, there's an investigation on the staff. Got you. Um, investigation going on at the hotel. So, yeah, the images that came out were really disturbing too. Yeah, TMZ, right? Yeah, TMZ. That was you bad. know, like, and and I hate people who kind of get on TMZ. Like, what do you expect from them? Honestly, mm-hmm. uh, like, to improve? No, no. What do you mean? Why do you expect them to improve on anything ethical? You're saying that. TMZ, they are who they are and they won't change. Yeah, and to a degree, as nasty as it is, um, if not them, then it's going to be somebody else who does it. I so believe that. they kind of cornered the market in doing it. You think because so? Because once they stop, another TMZ is just going to pop oh, up okay, and become okay. TMZ. But this is my whole thing with TMZ, right? I don't agree with it. No, 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 I know. I know you don't agree. I know you don't align with it's that. It's nasty. What yeah. I'm saying, though, TMZ, we can Google what his arm looks like because, again, the Picture that was leaked was a photo of his arm next to uh, where he fell down. Oh, I didn't see that. 
Yeah, and I saw I it. I didn't see that. I saw I it. So my whole thing is like, TMZ, we didn't need you to confirm what his arm looked like. Yeah, yeah I didn't, I didn't see that. I just saw um, the crack pipe. Yeah. The last time I seen a crack pipe was in the Lower East Side. <laughs> <laughs> what? No, for real. Yeah. They be around. Actually, so I was hanging out with y'all. We was at um. What? That was the last time. Guys, we saw? were not doing crack. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> I was walking back to my car after we had went out somewhere. We were oh, somewhere, yeah. and yeah, I saw these two gentlemen doing crack in the corner. Damn. Yeah. So yeah, that's outside, like right that was a while ago. Yeah, man. Again, condolences. Yeah. Um, it is really sad. It is really sad. Hopefully, you know. Um, I think he had children as well, or at least a oh, child. Oh, damn! I didn't did know he? that. Yeah, I, I, didn't, I damn, believe so. Damn. Um, these are uh, adult grown men. So <sighs> yeah, condolences. I just feel like this, like, it happens so much. Like, you get this immense amount of freedom when you're young. I mean, not freedom, uh, fame when you're young. And yeah. then it, like, really fucks with your mind. And then once you don't have that anymore, it leads all these people to, like, abuse these substances. Like, it's just such a vicious cycle. It's so fucking sad. Yeah, like, it is. I hate it. Crack is wild. <laughs> Yo, say on. I'm sorry. Say on. I'm sorry. I'm just. But it is wild like, because wild. Thinking about it. Some it is. Drug because on the list, out of they all also, but the that, things you is, can get. It didn't stop it's there. A, it's a little. I know it was ketamine, pink, pink cocaine, those pink kind cocaine. of things. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. So it's hard. But that's a broke nigga drug. That's what I'm saying. I'm with you. Pink cocaine. Say, no, no, no. Crack. That's rich niggas. No, yeah. That, I thought no, it was no, oh, crack. Yeah. <laughs> that's some poor nigga drug. Every time y'all say it's just so like piercing. My fault. Yeah. Crack. Like, yeah. Every, every time I hear a crack, I think of Smokey. Yeah. I'm not. Uh, is it Smokey from um, uh, New Jack City? Yeah. Right. <laughs> My whole thing with that is right. Like people that enjoy liquor for the most part. Shout out to us. Right. Well, let's go to alcoholics. Like the most severe. Okay. You still want to sell yourself on now? <laughs> <laughs> he picked up his cup to show it off. Shout out to us. <laughs> when they find their drink like top shelf liquor, mm -hmm. they don't go to E and J. Yeah. Right. Well, I had an E and J phase. Apple. I mean, we've been broke before. Mm -hmm. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, continue. That was fine. You were so, sipping E and J, Reggie? Uh, hell, hell yeah. Who? Freshman year? Yo, no, to make it even worse, guys, I was sipping, you know, like, you know, Burnett's? Mm -hmm. It was like nine ninety nine. Oh Oh, my God. <laughs> Y'all know about that shit? Who? Yo, you might be honorary <laughs> nigg. <laughs> Yo, please. Why? No, it you was can't freshman year. Nah, yeah. real, you can't say nah, that. Sipping yeah. E and J no. is crazy. No, no. no. E and J no. Apple. I've only yeah, known I know about that album. us to drink E and J <laughs> or the E and J Peach. I was having a great time. <laughs> right, I'm gonna ask you a real question, and this is not racist for real. It is. Watch. <laughs> How many Koreans do you know have drank E and J? Um, zero. <laughs> all right. It's they only drink soju. You see what I'm saying? Soju is fine. Like, but like, I had no in college. I had twenty seven dollars, and I had to stretch it for a year. So like, I had to. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> So Yo. like when the person goes to the liquor store, I can only afford Burnett's, and I I liked it. It was pink. It was pink lemonade. You know, that's niggotry. But oh I'm not ashamed. <laughs> I love it. But being broke in college should make you realize as a person you don't need that much. Yeah, fam, they was paying us eight ninety seven an hour at them low jobs. Yeah. Wait, that's a lot. I feel like no. Yeah, I was getting paid like six dollars. Yeah, like that was six, a lot for me on yeah. a campus job. Yeah, like six dollars. Oh, hello. Yeah, like five twenty five. <laughs> When okay, I was in college, <laughs> hello. Five twenty-five. I had the crazy. extra snacks, <laughs> <laughs> and too, like your bills aren't really like your overhead isn't that crazy. When exactly. You're in right. Also, too, the name I mentioned it was it was Pookie, not Smokey. Pookie, Pookie. 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 I'm bugging. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pookie, not Shout Smokey. out to all the Pookies in the world. Um, real quick before we get into like the topics, I do have something I want to tell y'all as my friends. Yeah. Oh, I Jesus. need y'all to hold me accountable. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I no longer. And this is just for like oh my god every time lies save on. Save on. every time you say Bro. no longer you longer yo <laughs> guys <laughs> we literally have footage of him for, say, for saying like five episodes in a row guys I'm never going out to party ever again and went out every weekend I'm never smoking hookah ever again <laughs> <Not lying. laughs> what is it today I'm not, sorry keep going for real and no, this I'm one not... we can track this one it's, okay it's all the other ones I didn't think y'all was gonna see it it's not happening I know we like, party with you now nah, the next weekend I, I thought what you would forgive me for that. Oh, of course. Give me a pass. But on the podcast, mm -hmm. I want y'all to really hold me accountable. <laughs> I no longer want to say the N word. Savon! <laughs> you got to put like a tip, a tip jar. You got to put money into like a I'm jar. I'm so serious. I don't want to refer like, to us as that no more. I camera. feel like you're just, I honestly, oh. I feel like you're just saying that just to say it. No. <laughs> like, so, are you really going to nah, do it? Nah, he, so last week. He said it okay, last okay, week. Okay, okay, okay. Last, last week, week. Um, he mentioned a couple times. Mm. Uh, after you left, um, and he still kind of said it afterwards. But personally, I don't <laughs> think I love I don't how think, you slid that in there. I don't think he has it in him to not say it. Is that why you? 
<laughs> reduced it today to nig. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what cheating. Hello, Wait, hello so what's the <laughs> test cheating? Oh, so man. you could like say that but not say the other? You can abbreviate. Nah. nah that's you just, got, that's you but it's still, it's still the same word. Yeah, you got to give it the whole term now. Nah, see, I'm not all the way there yet. Oh, you're like soft launch. Uh, it's a soft launch. <laughs> just okay. like when you can't just, go cold turkey. Yeah. I mean, if you genuinely, if this is genuinely something you want to do, of course I'll support you. But I'm just saying, like, mm. it's a big change. Like, it's a very big habit. Only on camera, not in my personal life. <laughs> I'm about to say, but this is only for yeah, this content. Is, no, I don't want to change like that. Yeah, like, no, 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 no. So this is only when we're doing this broadcast. Yes. I mean, why? It, um, I just feel like it's holding it us much? back, and I do say it a lot. Now and this nigga Malcolm X. <laughs> now this, this, <laughs> yo, now this, now this save on X. Now it's holding us back. I just feel like <laughs> we can go a little bit further if I removed it from my vocabulary. So the only way this would work is what's what's the consequence? If you say it, what, what do we do? Push I don't ups, know. Push yeah, ups. How do we hold you accountable? Push ups. Um, he, he running from the push ups. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. Man, you scared of them. Drink. That's crazy. It's been a little That's minute. always Alex's thing. Like, like, okay, fine. Like, if they make I'm a bet, sick. it's push-ups, and Savon never wants to do it. I never even say money. Because that. that. That's the, the nigga in them. <laughs> there you go. That's what they get. You said it. You said it. I know. And it can't be half the word. You That's might as well say it at that point. You can't say it. It's got to be the whole thing. You can't say the whole thing. I don't know. You figure. That's all you to figure. I know what I'm saying, nigga. <laughs> nah, come on, son. My fault. My it hurt. Don't say that no more. Oh, my God. That shit hurt me, son. Now Alex can't say either. Don't say that shit, son of Tell me, <laughs> shit hurt. I hate you. That would hurt. I'm serious, bro. Call me bro, bro. No. Like I don't even want to be referred to as one of them. Nah, for sure, you the bro. But what's, sure. what's the consequence? The consequence. Um. So Caleb, one of the guys who's been working at the studio, shout out to him. He actually had a really dope idea, which oh is gosh. I would donate, um, whatever proceeds that I have to the one thing that I hate. So don't donate it to a cause I stand for. <laughs> oh, donate okay, okay. it to like. I mean, like what? Attractive male. Athletes? I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> what? <laughs> they don't need any donations, first of all. Because I know that's his real ops. Savon cannot stand them athletes. That's why he makes so much money on the betting side. Yeah. That's true. I gotta get it back in blood. There you go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just a cause I don't really fuck with. Okay, guys. So. What's a cause? We're gonna have a little counter on the corner of this episode going ding every time he says let's the yes. n-word let's do it yes yes, yes sure. let's do it because i don't think but i'm done with that word on camera in my personal life cool we can say it, have a good time you know that's a part of me that's a part of the culture and then maybe right. one day i can graduate to just not using it at all <laughs> yeah. but i'm not there right now can't so, lie i think you got some time i'll be listening to breakfast club Charlemagne still getting nigga off on still getting it off? Yeah. yes he is and envy sometimes too i'll be like damn ain't this the radio so Wait, yeah how does that work on the radio they, they don't care they, they bleep it no, they bleep it on the radio okay, they, okay. you can on the radio on you can YouTube. dump you can hit the dump button yeah. so it means like it's it's an advance mm -hmm. so it'll dump what was supposed to be given to your car stereo yeah Ooh, okay yeah. serious XM employee. Hello. okay but they don't care the about month. you was employee of the month with that information <laughs> they should have yes. given you you was listening like, to that it's a, it's a dump <laughs> they should have given <laughs> that dump button you hit that dump button you don't know what was said okay oh. all right hello pink also <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving away secrets. <laughs> I went into my office today, my job. Oh, oh, you went into work. Yeah, I went okay. into work. Oh, you okay, from like Monday? Shout, yo, shout yo, out to honestly, us. I'm just changing. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just, I'm not even joking. I'm just loving this life update segment. Thank you. <laughs> it's great. I'm having so much fun right now. Yeah, and I like really debated on doing something that I didn't want to do. What's that? I'm free, y'all. Bow. Wait, oh. what? I'm free. What happened? Wait, what? You been I, th free. I think I'm a pod without it. All right, J. Cole. Wow. You've been through. Wait, I, I, think I feel I think like I'm you've done that. You've done that Nah, how, he's... Wait, how, how, it's shining right now? Nah, you good. It looks good. It looks beautiful. It looks good. Okay, all it's right. It's a soft... It's a nice little soft light. I put a little soft light on it. It's a soft... But, but Karen, if you use this in the thumbnail... <laughs> what else is... Oh, all the... Nah, okay, nah, I gave him nah, like 15 minutes with the hat. Start him off. Yeah. I gave him 15 yeah. minutes with the pull, hat. Pull from that one. But yeah, I really felt like today, like this color complimented me. I felt good in my in my head. I felt good in my head. I'm loving the confidence. Let's... Come on, man. This this little frame this frame of Savon got to be one of the slides on the on the carousel this week. With Stop! The hat on. Wow. He's gonna be mad at me. I can't do that. He go, he go, he you know, go. Reggie, you've done worse. I'm gonna I'm post it. Has it? You, Has give, it? you give me permission every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's done worse. Yeah, she sent them fucking shoes in a group chat and asked me what the fuck I thought. That was worse yeah, than anything nah. she ever did. Oh my god, guys! Forgot about that. I bro. almost forgot. Like, okay, so as a little cute little joke, you know, I like talking to my guys in the chat. I found a picture of. <laughs> What was it? Jordan sixes? Was it sixes? <laughs> was Them shits was seven. Okay, Jordan seventh, but it has heels on it. 
So it's like heel heel oh Jordans, and I thought I thought it was funny. I wanted to make the guys laugh. I was like, guys, I bought these. Can I wear them to the pod tomorrow? And Savon said, well, you're fired. Them look like, <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Them look like two dollar hooker Jordans. You know the ones. No, okay. So I feel like you guys know the way I dress. What I really wanted to bring up on the pod is like I put it on my story because I thought it was funny. Like I thought it was jokey. I thought people would laugh, mm -hmm. and I got so many replies. Like they weren't joking. They were dead ass. They were like, yo, fire, red. They don't like you. I'm not going. No, lie. no, no, like people. This is, this I I know they're not, I could tell they're not joking. They're like, yo, fire. Like, oh my God, like you really nah, found them. Nah, I'm so serious. And like see? one guy tagged me see? and reposted. He's like, yo, this fire. And see, like, he see? was trying to, he was I, trying to. That's the bad part about being a baddie. <laughs> that's the other side about being a baddie. They just gonna lie to you. Yeah, he was trying no, to. No, I could tell like they were nah. serious. Let me see his profile picture. Nah. Nah, and I'm gonna tell you a lot we, we based on you know right now. He his selfie you. game. Cause yeah. I seen that picture you posted on your story. You mean that exact pair of shoes they liked? Yeah, I thought it would be funny. Right, people, going... would, I thought people know I'm joking, but I feel like people... I got a little scared because I thought people didn't know I was joking. That's why I put the next slide. I had to put Savon's text in there to be like, hey guys, I'm joking. So the the, the pictures was the Jordan 7s, but they were more... Y'all remember the Fusions? Yeah, with a stiletto the day, it, was, it had a stiletto on Look, the this Jordan 7s. Literally, he said tough. I he's feel like that's not a jokey. Nah, that's not a jokey thing. Yeah, he put tough with three H's. Yeah, Reggie. He meant that. Can you tell him what he's hmm? his goal? Reggie, Reggie, he he wants relations. Yes. <laughs> Ugh. He doesn't care about John. He does not. Yeah. Oh my goodness. If that's, anything, see I'm that's the ill thing you could do is that when you're trying to flirt with a girl, <laughs> don't talk about her looks. Just start talking about some op two shit. Some abstract The things that you think she likes off. is yeah. what you got to get off in yeah. the DMs. You gotta, there you he go. really thought you was feeling those. Yeah, for sure. Oh, no, no, but that's what bothers me, that people thought I was serious. <laughs> I don't care about the replies. I'm saying people think I'm serious and I would actually wear those. Yeah. So did you appreciate my honesty when I told you don't ever wear them bullshits around me in your life? No, yes, you were honest. With that's why okay. I asked you. It was a test. I was very honest. Yes. Alex, what was your answer? Huh? <laughs> I would have asked if she was okay. <laughs> As, do you need to speak about anything? But you know, it also made me think about, like, if, it was, if that was my girlfriend and she asked me that thing, maybe I might need to lie. Happy wife, happy life. Look, all right. All right, let's not do that. Mm -mm. Hey, look, all right. Don't let a woman be happy around Pierre. <laughs> nah, he hates that shit. Nah, that's crazy. Oh, that's crazy. <laughs> you said and, it. Nah, I didn't say it. Nah, nah, she went crazy just now. Pierre, she went crazy just now. You said it. I didn't say it. Right. All he said was, I'm gonna let you happy wife, happy life. And Pierre goes, not on my watch. <laughs> Fuck that. So, we going to talk about it? You going to open it up? Yeah. All right, let's open it up. <laughs> So don't Unless listen. Unless Alex wants to finish this point, or would you want to? No, should we just go right into it? Okay. Please continue. I, I, I don't mind going last if y'all want to cook. No, no, no. Please go right now. <laughs> so, all right, listen, everybody listening to this right now. If you just heard what Reggie said, abort that from your brain. Do not <laughs> take it in. That that's not what that's not what's happening. Don't what I said was, crazy. I don't believe in happy wife, happy life. I believe in happy <laughs> spouse. Okay, sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. no, you, no, you cooked it up, crazy. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Happy spouse, happy house. Because happy, I like the remix. happy wife, happy life. <laughs> Who gonna tell him? That connotation just. <laughs> Who gonna tell him? Oh, let's, let's let him go. Let's right. let him go. Let's let him go. I know I'm not the only one that thinks this. No. So for the people that 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 are listening to what I'm saying, basically the whole happy wife, happy life thing, it gives the connotation of like, yo, like the only persons, the only persons. <laughs> how would I say? They get it all. The only the only persons happy uh, happiness in the relationship is only supposed to be the the woman or the lady. Can I that's ask you not, something? Okay, you go. You you finish. Though. That's not what I think. Both people are supposed to be as equally concerned with each other's happiness. It sounds good. Hold on, hold on. So, <laughs> I think your perspective of like, yo, both spouses have to be happy. I feel like that's a very true, beautiful sentiment. I think we all agree. The problem is, Pierre. The phrase is "happy wife, happy life." It's not "fuck my husband, his feelings don't matter." So the phrase is literally just about, hey, if my woman's happy. Things are great. That's all it means. It doesn't mean the husband does not matter, like my way or the highway. And I feel like you're taking it like only the woman matters, but that's literally not what the phrase is. So like, all right. So then, what's the imp no? Go ahead, Alex. And not for nothing, Pierre. Us men, we get over things pretty quickly. You get you get down to it. All right, let me chill. Not ahead. <laughs> I didn't even know where you was going. You gotta finish that thought. You, yeah, you drop down, get your ego, ego on, and mop me up. I done forgot what I was mad at. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so we a little what, bit more simpler to be, ha be make happy. I'm gonna be honest with you. Like, like even if we're frustrated with something, right? We we'll express ourselves. Yeah, we we'll say yeah. how we feel for the most part. For the most part, 
Nah, when they're unhappy, whole house bad. Yeah, you can't like eat a girl out bad. to make her feel better. Like she's still angry uh, even while you. Nah, I don't know she, some women be right, like that, right, some right, women right, not. Right, but right. I do no, agree no, with right, right. Pierre. We're you're saying right. like the ha- the right. husband's happiness does matter. Like that is that has right. always been true. And my thing is the the connotation of the phrase uh-huh. just doesn't have that anyway. So let me ask you: this. What's the inverse of that? What's the male version of that? Cook and clean. <laughs> what? what? <laughs> Say, no, what are you talking about? I don't know if you I don't, get, the I don't know if you understood what that shit was supposed to mean, No, he asked, what's the inverse of happy wife, happy life? Yeah. For men. For men. Cook and clean. <laughs> Yo, Wait, what do you mean like What do you inver- mean by no, that? Like, no, no, no. I feel he's, like that's not what he's asking. He's, not, he's saying like, what's the male version of that, right? No, so let's personalize I it. just told you. That's, that's, that's Savon. Savon's version of it. Okay. <laughs> So Alex, go ahead. What would be your version of it? That was sexist. Wait, I'm, I'm, I, I want to make sure I understand the question. Okay. If the phrase is happy wife, happy life, right? Yep. You're saying what is the opposite of that for men? For you. What would that be for you? Oh, so like, man. if I had a phrase that was similar to happy wife, happy life. Yeah. I just told you. Say, oh, no, it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> not to him. You, you don't be cleaning? I'm so you confused be, right you now. Be, no, I'm not. No, you be of cleaning. course. You uh, got to share responsibilities. Mm-hmm. But... I've been having dialogue with some people in my, my personal life <laughs> where there's a lost art of cooking and cleaning. Oh, shit. I'm not saying you have to do it. I, I cook and I fucking clean. Like, I'm not trying to make this a sexist thing. No, nah, I feel you. Yeah, we like, do. We it, do. It, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't want to oh. do that. Well, but I also do believe in gender roles in relationships. I think I've said that on the podcast. Nah, you are. Well, like, so my shit easy. I, and I think everybody has just roles in relationships. I don't think mm. one should be assigned one mm. or the other. I think you can also kind of... Um, What's the word? Kind of oh, fuck. Mm. Damn, I, I'm losing the word. That's but fair. both parties can do everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, but mm. I think you know they're, they're like you simple. expect me to change a tire, right? Okay. I would think most oh, mine, women would be like, "Hey, change, not not <laughs> your tire." Thanks. Yeah. But I will. <laughs> I like, no. If you give me Vaseline, I'll change your tire. <laughs> it's a swap. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> PM, my shit easy though. Don't be dumb. Make them come. That shit quick. Right to the point. Everybody get fed. <laughs> My fault. Okay. I don't think women. <laughs> I, have no idea what's going on. I don't think women, women. Nah, let me not say that. Fault, I'm lying. Yeah. All right, so, Reggie, you want to answer that question? You want me to rephrase it, Reg? Oh yeah, I'm still a little confused, but yeah. So, so like, if if happy wife, if we're going with happy wife, happy life, what would be the inverse of that for men? So if happy wife, happy life is for the woman's happiness and everything like that, what would that be for men? Like, what's the inverse of that for men? What? Why? What do you mean by like inverse? Can you just answer? I don't know, like what is uh, happening. Like, Ninety P is answer. I, I need to get a better scope. Um, he's asking, what do women say in the way that men say "happy wife, happy life"? What is the phrase for women that bestows that upon their husband or their partner? I don't know, like a cute rhymey phrase, but wouldn't it just be like, oh, if, if my husband's happy, the house is happy, like something like that. Like, yeah, can't I mean, that exist? Again, it's all personal. So if if that's what you know, if that's what it is for you, then got that's you. Cool. He's yeah. asking you to paraphrase. Yeah, 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 got you. What would that look like for women? Is his question? Yeah. If my man is happy. No, yeah. I think you just answered about what you said before. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. Again, I just think in, in a in hey. relationship, both people are supposed to be as equally concerned with each other's happiness. Hey, all of this shit sound good, y'all. What I'm realizing about life is that certain things are the way they are for a reason. Um, Pierre is absolutely right. Both parties should be happy. Mm-hmm. Both mm-hmm. parties should feel uh, supported from one another. I completely agree. <laughs> Unfortunately, in the real world, oh, Pierre, sh- I'm going to repeat this shit, dog. Okay. For the most part, us guys get over things pretty quickly. Pretty quickly, in theory. But that's like in a, theory. I feel, yeah, I feel like that's in like theory. a blanket statement, though. Like Pierre saying, Definitely. like, "Hey, if I'm upset, my feelings matter as well as a man." No, which absolutely. I agree with. Yeah. I'm, I'm, and I'm not pulling from that. What I'm advancing it, mm-hmm. and I'm saying, "All right, cool. Those may be your sentiments, but because the both of us are so different, right? Mm-hmm. As men and women, as men and women, we are very different. Okay. So a lot of these things sound emotional intelligence levels are different for all of us. Like it should be sounding good until you in the thick of it and you go, nah, maybe happy wife, mm-hmm. happy life. I. Yeah. <laughs> and all that really means is <laughs> so just saying. like, say yes. Yeah. Like, babe, you like these ugly ass shoes? Yes. Yeah. You don't really got to like them, but you give the support of, hey, yes, I like them. <laughs> so lie. That's what happy. It's I a white think- lie. I don't think that I'm I, not gonna hold you, Reggie, because I ain't gonna like. Well, that's a joke. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're gonna bring up John. That's no, a little I wasn't joke. Gonna, I wasn't gonna add you. Like, I don't want to do that. I'm yeah. just saying, like, I know when some men are really just of the mindset. Hey, 
whatever floats your boat. If it makes yeah. you happy, I'm not going to intrude my personal feelings on it because clearly this makes you happy and it's just not a big enough deal for me yeah, to kind of like, give you any pushback on it, any resistance on it. Right. So like a pair of shoes for some, for me, I don't like we're a representation of each other. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. If I walk out the house without my hat, <laughs> you may feel away. Like, damn, no, nigga. She will. She, she love you. Depending on who it is. <laughs> this nigga's crazy. I've yeah. been blessed where, like, I've been, I'm supported in <laughs> fact, that, right? Fact, fact. But if somebody's like, yo, nigga, I, I ain't meet you like this, huh? or you look crazy. <laughs> I like, ain't it meet could you happen. Like, it I, could... But then how would you feel? <laughs> what if I, like, really couldn't dress? How would you? No, okay, so, no, let's take the hat example. How would you mm-hmm. feel if, like, one day, like, today, you want to take your hat off? Yeah. What if your girl was, like... No, like, put your hat back on, like, ew. Like, what if she was like that? Can I ask you a real question? Like, wouldn't you not like that? How good does she suck dick? <laughs> you know what? Oh we my had God. so much things to talk <laughs> Yo, about today. Bro. We had... <laughs> it depends. <laughs> I'm to, when I tell... Hey, y'all, y'all just stay seated. Um, this, There was so much to get to, I tell you. I, I, when I... Oh, boy. Let me... T- <laughs> Because we're not doing this. Pierre, thank you so much. The Grammys. <laughs> I'm just saying shit now. Because <laughs> this nigga, you know, you, this bro. <laughs> this bro. Let's do it. This bro. That's crazy. I'm screaming. Uh, Grammy submissions have started for artists across the board, across all genres. And I think um, that they're going to announce when the, the, the this year's Grammys or the 2025 Grammys is slated to happen. Is that 2024 Grammys, actually? No, oh, it's, next year. It's next yes, year, right? Grammys uh, next year. Twenty-five first, Grammys, right? Mm-hmm. The first week of February. Yep. First week of February. Thank you. So they're going to announce that shortly. Uh, some quick news that has gotten out before the Grammys. Uh, Tommy Richmond. Mm-hmm. Tommy Richmond. We actually never got to speak about him on the main pod. Uh, Reggie and I got to speak about him briefly on the Patreon episode. Go subscribe, like, and comment right now. Um, but yeah, he made headlines this week because it was revealed that he has submitted songs and music underneath the rap category for the grammys now uh his potential peers that he might be competing with might be kendrick lamar i think i have here ty dollar signing gay carnival futures and metro boomings like that um it's gonna go up against some big some big songs Mm -hmm. long story short and that was a really big song too yeah not to mention yeah for sure definitely was a big song right and um yeah Savon. I remember when we briefly spoke about this a couple weeks ago, Mm -hmm. you felt very strongly about Tommy Richmond, and I absolutely understand why, Mm -hmm. but I did want to hear how you felt about this, and just to advance that conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, So he's submitting for rap category. He came out and said, I am not hip-hop, essentially. He did. I'm not a hip-hop artist, is what he said. Um, He didn't fully denounce hip-hop, but he did make the distinction in which he has the right to do, Right. If I come out and say I am not a sports podcaster, but I talk about FanDuel every week, then like, you know, that's that's just kind of the equivalent to me, right? I think that so in podcasting, because I have the privilege of working on some pretty big shows over at my job at HBO, I understand the process of how these things get submitted. Yeah. Right. Um, the host of these podcasts who are notable, right? We've had Method Man host some shows. We've had uh, Kara Swisher host some HBO shows, one for a succession, right? They aren't the people who are submitting on their behalf. That's correct. Right? Our job as HBO, the people who own the IP, we are actually submitting each show for whatever category we deem it to be. So one show could be for best host it could be for a best episode whatever it is we feel as a committee as a team over at hbo we will submit um according to that category the host they aren't submitting they just participated by doing their job and being a creative and being a talent right yep so i kind of get to see this with a different lens or i view it with a different lens i don't believe tommy richmond went to his label or his team and said hey guys Submit me as a rapper. Okay. I think his team came and said, all right, where do we have the best shot? Um, What makes the most sense? Can we even get away with putting this in the rap category, right? Sometimes you have different buckets as a team and you say, hmm, this can fit in classical rock, (laughs) but it can also fit in rap. Mm -hmm. Now, which one am I going to spend my money on? Because it costs to submit to these things and a lot of people don't realize that. And you want to win. A lot of people think that uh, the fans vote. A lot of people think Mm -hmm. that it just gets pulled out of thin air. No, 
Every time an artist gets submitted to any category for most award shows, they are paying for that entry, whether they win, lose, draw, whatever the case may be. So if I'm going to invest my money into a category, I'm going to put it into a category where I think I have the best shot to win. And so maybe his team, the people that handle him, said, fuck it, we're going to put it in the rap category because it does have elements of rap. Whether he's a rapper or not, it does have elements of hip hop. I'm sorry, it does have elements of hip hop. No, and, and we don't have to debate that. We did that in the group chat, uh, but it, we should do it here a little bit too. Where do you see the elements of hip hop? Just give me two elements. When you can hear I play that. the song? Yeah. All right, I'll just play the song, and we'll let sure. the listeners decide. Like we don't, we don't have to do this. We're gonna, we already agreed to I disagree. Say, Alex, I don't know That's if fine. like it'll get anywhere because it is like so subjective. Like there could be, there could be a melodic rap song that sounds exactly like this. Right. You know? Honestly, and Honestly. and then other people could be like, no, he's exclusively singing. So this, it's like so subjective. Honestly, and then also just going to and again. Whether you believe it's a rap song or not, that is completely up to you. But it is characterized, categorized, I'm sorry, as a rap song on DSPs. Like, his team under as well, Tommy right? Rich. I, I know. So it's not like I'm just pulling it out of my ass saying, oh, it has hip hop elements. Somebody on his team also believes it does have elements of rap in this song, a hip hop. I don't believe that. I think people on his team. So he's underneath Brent Fayaz's umbrella. Mm hmm. R and B, R and B, but it's a different style of R and B. If it you is. Got, right, if you guys know Brent, he is definitely on the on the cooler side, if that makes sense, like the bad boy side of R and B, like right? hip hop adjacent. Absolutely, hip hop yeah. adjacent. He deals with a lot of underground hip hop artists. Like Brent lives in that in that era, that field, and I'm sure they've seen the success of what Brent has done mm -hmm. and Brent's affiliates. So when I see the song listed as rap or hip hop on DSPs, or when I see them submitted to the Grammys. I just think there's a team that wants to win For and sure. they just know how popular hip hop culture is. They know how mm -hmm. popular rap is. But to a degree, they also have to acknowledge that this does have elements of hip hop for you to submit it as a rap song, not just to the board, but even on DSPs. I don't so when I go search that. it up, it's not being found under alternative rock, right. or alternative funk, whatever. Right. Like they're saying, hey, find us in the rap section. So it does have but, elements of. I'm not saying again. Hey, we don't. We, we're no, gonna no, go back and forth. It's not. I don't it's not I'm do not that. even talking about this. I'm talking about his team. I'm off that with you. Y'all could decide in the comments. Go crazy. I'm with you on that. What I'm saying is, a team can't tell me what is. It's like don't tell me you're pissing on me and it's raining. Like I, I see what you're saying because it's like I yeah. wish that because Tommy Richmond has said like, hey, basically what I took his message as was like, hey, I love hip hop, but please don't box me in as a hip hop artist. So I wish he and his team mm -hmm. were on the same page with that yeah. before they did all this mm -hmm. like on his behalf, submitting him in every rap category. So yeah. everyone thinks he wants to be a hip hop artist, but he's like, yo, I'm literally singing on my entire album. <laughs> yeah. Like, please stop doing this to me. Yeah, like, you can't. Yeah. You, you guys can't be the reason why I'm looking at what is what or what's hip hop or what's rap. That's literally under a rap category at the Grammys right now. I don't care where they listed, who tells me you cannot do that to me. Hey, Reggie, what was that thing with the um, hypnotic is no longer... Oh my God, it's this theory we were talking about with the Fruit of the Loom. Things oh, that, um, Mandela Effect. Mandela Effect, right? That's what this feels like. You, you, oh, like why are you telling me yeah, you that I rap? There you go. You <laughs> cannot tell me what you identify hip-hop or rap to be because I already know what it is. I don't care what you categorize it as. I don't care what you have to do to sell. Me, personally, I can understand, right? Because we've seen artists like Post Malone, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen acts like Post Malone that come into hip-hop and they start off as a hip-hop artist. And then gradually over time, they transition over to whatever it is that they really want to do, right? My whole thing with that is, this is very similar to that in a way, because I don't, and I don't want to speak for Tommy Richmond because I don't know where he's going to take it. But I did enjoy his album. Mm -hmm. And I saw elements of funk on there. I saw elements of... Just music on it. But he could not be a hip hop or a rap artist, but still make a song that falls under that category. I'm not and I think thought. we see that with the biggest artists. We see that yeah. with Drake all the time. Yeah. I think sure. Drake's latest song was a Latin song. He's not a Latin artist. <laughs> he just be doing shit. Like, shit, he's no. made straight <laughs> Latin, Latin songs. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. He's not necessarily, he's not at all. Fuck necessarily. He's not a Latin artist. Right. We see Beyonce dive in the country. She's not a country artist, mm -hmm. but she's but see, an artist to the fullest effect where she can make that type of music mm -hmm. and it'd be considered that. But mm -hmm. we know she's not. In, in a country artist, we know Drake is not a Latin, a reggaeton artist. Mm -hmm. Like, they're but, just not. But when Drake hops on a Camila Cabello song, mm -hmm. 
she's not considered hip hop. It's still a mm-hmm. pop song, For right? Sure. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where I'm getting at. Where it's like I I know what it is. You can't you can't tell me what it is. Yeah. And I've, Ki- I've been here. Coyote, his most recent album is categorized as R and B and soul, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. And if I'm his team, that makes a ton of sense. And they left <laughs> off the Million Dollar Baby record, uh-huh. which is considered a rap record. So I think you can serve different bases. And it just so happened that this is the song that popped for him, right? Like he's creating art. He doesn't know when he makes this song mm-hmm. that is going to take off the way that it does. But if it does have certain elements or a certain community is gravitating towards it, yeah. and his team also feels like this is where we can get the support, like it's irresponsible for us to just completely denounce what they're saying it is meant but or see, that's intended the thing. to be. When I see Tommy tweet, I'm not a hip hop artist, which is true. Exactly, right? But this is just the, the conflict probably between him and his team, mm-hmm. right? When I see you tweet that, and then, uh, I'm sorry, what did you just say? You said with the, um, fuck, just had a fucking fart. Anyway, when I see him say that, and I see the team saying, no, this is hip hop and rap, there's a conflict there. Something, like, that would bother you. That, that's going to bother me. You, yeah. you guys are not on the same page. You mm-hmm. understand what I'm saying? So the fact that you're not on the same page. Has he ever said that song wasn't a hip hop or a rap song? I don't think so. I don't, I don't think so either. I, I would think love people, to hear his thoughts on that particular song. Because mm-hmm. we know how he feels about who he is at a, as an artist. And there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, this is not who I am as an artist. Right? Like, I'm talented enough. I'm versed enough. I'm educated enough to make a different type of song every time I step into the booth. This just happened to be the song that went. Right? Like, I do think that is true. Whereas, I think Post Malone completely cosplayed as a hip-hop artist. With the cornrows, with the braids, with the titling of his song, with the content of his music, with the collaborations that he had. I think that was a lot more blatant mm-hmm. in monetizing our culture in a certain way. Whereas I think maybe Tommy Richmond, he just happened to pop off of a song that connected with hip hop or had elements of hip hop in it. Not saying it's a completely hip hop song, yep. but again, somebody on his team has said, oh, yeah, this is a rap song. This is a hip-hop song. But, but Okay, stay there. But my thing is, Savon, is the why. Is it because they actually believe that there were elements there, or it's more lucrative for them? I think like it's both. I, it could be, but if I'm a team, I want to give my artist the best chance of winning something. Mm-hmm. And he would have to go deal with Sabrina Carpenter in them. But if it was a... Right? Com- let's say if, if the- it was a complete country song or whatever you want to c- categorize sure. this song to be right mm-hmm. you can't get away with saying a country song is a hip-hop song if it doesn't have certain elements of hip-hop in that song i see sure. what you're saying I, I, like, see, I see like, what you're like you can't just put out yeah. a fucking classical jazz song and then say oh shit i'm gonna submit it to hip-hop because it's super popular and because this is where i can win it has to fit a certain criteria for it to even be categorized in that genre i don't know I don't know. It has man. to have certain elements, whether it just be the bass, the eight oh. It has to have something that says this identifies with true. this like genre. It, if you, it if can't you, just be if, classical jazz. If, oh, if now I want to be hip hop because I want to win awards. If you're an independent artist, bro, you could open up any DSP. You could find any distributor. You could go DistroKid. You mm-hmm. go United Masters. And you will be the one to upload and specify what it is your music is. I can upload this podcast as a fitness podcast. That's what I'm saying. We, we that say the doesn't same mean thing. that it's a fitness podcast. We saying the same thing. So it thing. shouldn't be accepted <laughs> as a fitness podcast. We saying the <laughs> same thing. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> you gaslit me again. Because <laughs> we're not I, saying I, the I same what, thing. I see, I see I'm not saying the same thing. I see, right, I see what Savon is saying because he's like, the fact that it's even allowed to be considered in the rap category he's like that means it is kind of rappy to some but what about what i just said y'all i can upload a song right now and Mm -hmm. it could literally be an r&b song and i can upload it and classify it as a rock song and nobody will stop me (laughs) but nobody will stop me but if you take it to the if you take it to the grammys (laughs) and you try to submit that song as a rock song and it's an actual r&b song it's not going to be placed in that category you know what the committee the uh, academy would say oh no we think you serve better here that's what happened with our podcast we submitted to the signal awards under a certain category they reviewed it and they said you know what you guys yes this may apply Mm -hmm. but we think you fit better over here so we're going to place you here because it's a little bit more fitting Right, like mm. that's what happens. So if I have a rock and roll song and I submit it to the R and B category, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Just because I submitted it and just because I labeled it that doesn't mean that's what it is. Facts. Once it goes to the people who are actually responsible for curating these things, they say, "Wait, 
this doesn't have any elements of R and B in it. He is screaming, "Go off, what the fuck are you? Totally I, you. I, I hear what you're saying. You. I hear what you're saying. I want to kill my mother. <laughs> you know, I really need to do Bugging. it, dude. Bugging. I hear what you're saying, right? But that I I don't agree with it. The reason why I don't agree with it is because I just saw the Grammys create another category, melodic rap. There was never a such thing as melodic rap before. <laughs> you're, so that, you're good at this. That's shit. telling me, <laughs> Pete, right? Yo, I was like, oh. I give up. <laughs> I give, I give that's up, telling bro. me. Like, that's telling me everybody's confused. Real talk. <laughs> no, it's not. What, how could it not? No, no, bro, there mean, was never a such thing as melodic rap before. No, even if these things oh, expanded. Let me, let me finish, right? Mm -hmm. I think their version of what they consider to be melodic rap is artists that sing a lot, use a lot of auto tune, uh, combined with hip hop and rap elements. Correct. But it's not that. So Reggie, what was you saying? No, I think um, I don't know if people are confused. No, actually, you know what? Confused might be a right yeah, word. I just confused. think I just think we're just finally progressing a lot. You know, yeah. adding the Afrobeats category. Like I think now we're finally being like, you know what? Maybe we shouldn't shove all this music in one fucking umbrella. Let's make different categories. So that's why things are changing a lot, which is a good thing. Yes, like, because for that, no matter what I yeah. upload this song to be. Yeah. This is never going to be accepted into R and B. I don't this know. is an amazing this is song. All, this is Such all R and B. Baby all face. Lose. Baby face. Savon, this is wrote all, this song. No, that's what I'm you saying. Get, but but if listen, if but, just listen. I, I know the song. If I upload but if this baby, song, but if baby face wrote it. All of this shit come from us. So you telling me this is R&B? This is rhythm and blues. You telling me this can be submitted into the R&B category what I'm and be accepted? What you I'm know saying what? You is, should, you should what, be able to what, submit this. What I'm saying is, let me say, <laughs> can we talk? He bugging, he bugging. Can we talk real quick? This is not R&B, no what matter I, who wrote it. What I'm saying is, R&B in 2024 sounds very different than the R&B from 1975. Like originally, yeah. sounds very different from the Marvin Gaye. So if sounds I, like real talk. If it I is. can submit that in R&B yes. just because Babyface wrote it, now you're boxing Babyface into only an R&B writer. No, when he's clearly you gift, from? because you're telling me no. because Babyface had anything to do with the song. No. That this automatically can be categorized as R and B oh, just no, because no, no. he is an R and B That's fucking what I'm, mega star what I'm, writer. What I'm it saying has is no elements of R and B in this song. What I'm saying is R and B and music has transformed a plethora over the years. That's why I'm going back to the point of I think everybody's just confused. Million Dollar Baby is categorized not even under a, a melodic rap category for the Grammys. It's categorized under rap. Mm -hmm. Say Vaughn. You can't tell me Million Dollar Baby is a rap song. I did song. It, and I'm not trying to say I know that. you're not, but that's the point, because that's what I'm saying we're on the same page. Me knowing that is like, okay, cool. You guys obviously submitted this. Like, like if that was under melodic rap, I would understand it more. Savon, it's under the rap category. Yeah, but so, now, we're, now, now, now we're trying to dive into the nuances of the argument, which I understand, facts. right? Now we're taking elements of hip-hop and rap. We're going from melodic rap to mm -hmm. rap. The reason why this song in particular is probably being submitted and accepted into rap mm -hmm. is because it's such a massive song that it's like, oh, wait, it can fall in the subgenre of melodic rap. But the prestige of the actual rap Grammy is what people are going after. So we're going to push it into that category because it is a subgenre of hip hop. Because it has elements of hip hop, but, we're not just going to shove it in the melodic rap. And I don't know, maybe they did submit for the melodic rap category as well. <laughs> but it was such a massive song that people are also going to put it into the rap category. We just been saying over the last year or two that hip hop mm -hmm. and rap hasn't had the best year. Mm -hmm. So if we get a song that actually moved the needle the way that this song did, yeah, they're going to make exceptions for it. It doesn't mean that it's an actual hip-hop and rap song, right. but the reason that it's able to exist <laughs> under that genre is because mm -hmm. it does have certain elements of that genre of music. Well, it's and not, I, it can't and, be categorized and, as a hip-hop or a, rap or a, a classical and, jazz song because it has zero right, elements of that. Where did, where did Elvis get country music from? I don't know. School me. Rhythm and blues. You can watch his movie. You can okay. keep up with his story. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Like a lot of this is already derived in our music, in our culture. For sure, we you know, know what I'm saying. That. So, so when you play a, a song that like how you just played, and it doesn't sound like the R&B of 2024 or the mm -hmm. 90s, it doesn't mean it's still not a part of that. You see what I'm saying? It, it does when we're talking about this. I understand okay. the, the I'm, where I'm music derives from. Mm -hmm. Yes, the music theory of mm -hmm. Elvis and and everything we we always say and we it's always rhythm know. And blues. I get that. I understand that. Mm -hmm. But just like rhythm and blues, just like you just brought up the melodic rap, right. music changes. Music 
creates different branches of itself. So rhythm and blues turned into rock and roll and turned into swing music and all right. of that thing, right? It transformed, but it also created its own genre. Sure. So you can't put Elvis Presley in the R&B world, even though he was influenced by the rhythm and blues, the Louis Armstrongs and all of those people back, the Frank Sinatras were like, yes, it's all intertwined, it's connected. We understand where it derives from, mm -hmm. but just because that's the music theory and the inception of it doesn't mean that you get to kind of pick and choose. Like, I'm with you. This is also, it, it has to have elements to even qualify for this category is it what doesn't. I'm saying. You're, and, and I love you because, no, 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 you're right. Hold on, bro. We be on the same page for real. We just be arguing the wrong person. You're not arguing me. I'm with you. Savon is a music purist for the one for those of y'all that don't know. He likes how music is supposed to be. Quality music. That's what he comes from. That's what he, I fully support that, bro. I, I have no argument with that. What I'm saying is it's changing. Okay. It's completely changing, bro. And because it's changing, you can't play in my face like that. You literally just told me you could you wouldn't consider uh Devil was it what's his what's his song? Devil Dance Dance? No, nah, the shit with Tommy, my fault. Devil in a whatever. Million no, Dollar Baby. Million Dollar Baby. You, you just told me you could you would never consider that to be a rap song. No. Right. The mere fact that it has been chosen, mm -hmm. Savon, it tells me that people can put something there that's not supposed to be there. That Hold on. If it has elements of that genre is why it's there, is and, what I'm saying. But to now I'm to not the point saying that it's a full on rap song, but it does have elements of hip hop. So now you back can't to the put point that as just... a classical jazz song, is what I'm saying. Just because it made like they upload it as a classical jazz song, yeah. you can't just say this is classical jazz. It has to have certain elements in it to even qualify, is what I'm saying. I just gave you an example with our but podcast. You, but you literally just broke down to me, right? How music has changed over the years and created a new genre, right? If that's the case and you can't categorize that as rap, why can't you just put whatever that is in the new genre? See what I'm saying? No, I don't, but it's okay. Because we, we did this in the group chat. We, we did this in the group chat. The comments, I mean, yeah. I'm sure they found it entertaining, but also yeah, sure. I just wanted to, you know, I think this is a good place to end. I don't know why we're arguing because it's not even nominated. Like, it's not. It's not. It's, it's literally just submitted. submitted. So, yeah. so, like, that wasn't. It wasn't validated in anything. Like it wasn't like chosen and right. rap. Like it was right. just merely like the paperwork was done. Mm -hmm. I think Alex just wanted me to say nig. Yo, I, did. I said it. He, I think. I he wait, did you wanted... say it? No. Oh. He gonna say it today. <laughs> nah, I think he just because I told him before we even engage. Like, bro, we don't gotta do this. Like, we well, did. Yeah, this. We, the track. Like, we, we yo, do a you podcast. You always try to bait me, bro. We like, do a podcast. Why do you do this? That was a good music that conversation. Was a good, I didn't want to talk about. We this. doing it for the people. Ooh, you got a few good points off. Yeah, I did. Oh, did. <laughs> okay. uh, he was like, I did. Yo, you might have cooked me. Ah, uh, shit, I did. <laughs> I'm saying you had some very good points. No, that was a good argument. Yeah. No, that was a good argument. Leave it in the comments, y'all. Leave it in the comments. Leave it in the DMs too. Engagement. Not yet. Not mine. Everybody DM Alex. Gotta get. No, engagement. No. Gotta get the engagement get out going. Of there, Got get it. Well, yo, when no. they engage, you engage, we engage. Engage. Man. Get out of there, y'all. Get out of there, y'all. Get out of there, man. Y'all using them DMs too much, all right? Oh, uh, man. What else are we talking about? Anything with the Grammys? Anything else? I don't Ooh. believe so, right? Do, 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 do. No, but we do have to talk about some other uh, major hip hop acts. Uh, I know he was nominated in the same category as Kendrick Lamar. This has been Kendrick Lamar's year. Um, Kendrick Lamar, Future, Metro Boomin. They started some shit at mm. the top of this year. Mm -hmm. And now it seems like some of those participants are having a change of heart. Now, all of those participants have been pretty active over the last week. Mm -hmm. We've seen Young Thug tweet from a jail cell, hey, when we all make music, it's better for us, Drake, Future, and Metro. Now, when I first saw that, you Wait, know what I thought. Can I read the tweet? For sure. Go okay. For so Young Thug, his exact words were, Drake, Future, Metro Brewman, we all brothers. Music ain't the same without us collabing. Now, <laughs> how is Young Thug collabing? He just put out an album. He's not collabing, though. He did collab. He He's, put out an album and Drake was on it. They was in the studio together? I don't know how it was oh, done. Oh, they made something happen. But it was, that was a collaboration. He, he dropped a new verse. You don't remember the album he put out when he first got dropped? How long ago was that? Probably like a year almost. Year, he year hasn't year recorded music for a while. You don't so know that. You, trying to pe you don't know I, what his commissary like. You know what? You're right. I <laughs> you just don't know thought it was strange it when I saw him <laughs> say we collabed. Like, we don't see him in the courtroom every other week. Like, it's fucked up. But you could tell. But you, I get maybe the he met in the future. Yeah, because he probably feels yeah. like he's coming home soon. His trial's been a mess. Yeah. Every nigga feel like, oh. Ooh. No, no, no. That's a, nah, it's facts. Oh. Add that to the, yeah. How much is that? Uh, mm. 50 bucks. Damn. Wow, you said that so smooth. I didn't realize. <laughs> Caught that. Wow. 
Damn, every per- if you wow. bro, every bro feels like that, you dude. Stop that bro if you got, if you guys didn't even say anything, I wldn't even notice because it was so smooth. Noticed. It was yeah, so smooth. I didn't even realize until Pierre says something. Ah, damn. Right. See? Every nigga up. say he coming home. Right. <laughs> Tighten up. Every bro says Yo, that. Yo, and then the sentence you used it, it was like it's, it was smooth too. <laughs> but everybody think they coming home. But yeah, anyway, nah, he, duck home. He, he yeah. So he said that. Um, how do y'all feel about that? Any thoughts there? Is future retweeting it? Of, is that yeah, a that cosign? Is, that is what was interesting to me because for me, I'm not mad at like. I guess it's just the most simple point. Like, I'm not mad at Young Thug saying that because wasn't Young Thug not involved at all? No. Like, he never turned against Drake, so... He got bigger first to fry. Yes, he's literally, you know, fighting a huge case. <laughs> but, like, the fact that Young Thug was a f- person to say, I'm not mad because if it was some phony person that was completely involved in the beef now saying it, I'd be like, oh my God, this is so stupid. You're being two-faced. But the fact that Young Thug said, I don't, I feel like he is, he sh- he is the person that should be saying it to unite people. Man, Young Thug and that sound like, nah, when I come home, I want to make music with Drake. Y'all gonna have yeah, to, exactly. y'all, gonna have, y'all gonna have to figure this out. Yeah, because he's, he's like, he's like, <laughs> yeah. y'all mad at, I'm not mad at Drake. Drake, you still yeah. have my number. Yeah. We're still open to collab. So I respect it because, And it could get yeah. weird because he's really, he has a really close relationship with Metro and Future. Uh, Future is somebody okay. who is highly respected in the streets, mm-hmm. so I, that might be a conflict of interest for maybe Thug and Future one day. Shit, they was at odds at one point way back in the day. I don't know if you guys remember, but I know that they're cool now, and he wants to continue that relationship. Yo, man, just think about it like this: mm-hmm. Drake probably spent a bag on his commissary. Oh, for sure. Okay, I think a lot of people. I think Metro probably has too. Yeah, I'm sure. I think a lot of people supported Thug during his mishaps. Yeah, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. But and, listen- wait, didn't Drake post a story confirming that he like spent money on? Oh, on Thug? Com- yeah, he be putting money on a lot of niggas' books. I can't keep up no more. Yo, you gotta pay for play. <laughs> <laughs> gotta pay the Ooters, right? <laughs> you gotta pay for play, man. <laughs> Kendrick tried to tell us in the third verse. Yo, look, Thug probably got a thousand honey buns in that cell. <laughs> Fuck is you talking about, man? He like, nah, y'all bugging. Yeah, you ever Drake, had, bro? Hey, uh, Jack Mac. I've heard of what, what a Jack Mac is. Why have you heard about what a Jack Mac is? You never ate it? Why the fuck would I eat a Jack Mac? <laughs> Go ahead. Tell the people what you Jack do Mac is. I do do push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> that has nothing to do. I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm, I'm trying to, curious. No, I'm trying to guess what it is based on the name. Just look it up on your own time. Will I be... No. Will I regret no, it? No, no, That's no, okay. solitary confinement burgers. <laughs> How do you make it, though? Like, what's, what's it comprised of? Look it up Chips. on your own time, bro. It's a delicacy. <laughs> Behind uh, bars, okay, and like like a snack, <laughs> sure. Uh, it's more like a yeah. it's like an entree. This is funny. It's like now, an entree. To add to this, we actually I'm glad we had some days before when this news came out because some days passed. Uh, Twenty One Savage held the birthday party, uh, of course, for himself and Drake and Metro were supposed to be at that party. A lot of people were assuming, like uh, you know. Young Thug kind of went ahead with the tweet like, hey, I know you guys are probably all going to be together this week, so let's show the general public like, yo, we all brothers is love, so when you guys get to the birthday party, it could at least look cordial. Uh, 21 Savage's party has came and passed. Neither Metro or Drake was there. That's the first move that Drake has done that I agree with in a very long time. Well, you agree with it? Because you want an island, so stay on your island. Like, even with 21 Savage supporting Drake over the last few months, yeah. verbally. Um, and I think they even was on stage with each other at some point after all of that shit kind of popped off. Yeah, stand on your own. This isn't time to, like, show camaraderie, especially mm. with people from mm. Atlanta. Right. Um, even if you and 21 have a relationship, just shoot him a text. Hey, happy birthday, brody. Mm-hmm. And keep it pushing. Keep like, it pushing. I don't think he needed to show up there. Like... Drake is at the crossroads and it's really crazy because I see a lot of people comparing him to Ja Rule. I think Fat Joe might have even said something like, mm-hmm. Drake is Ja Rule and Kendrick was 50 Cent. And a lot of people are saying that the biggest thing that 50 Cent did to Ja Rule was change how people Perceived received him. him. Yeah. Right? And it seems like Drake is at that crossroad. Not only is Drake fighting or was fighting against Kendrick Lamar. But it also appears he was fighting against his label and the support of his label. Um, did y'all see how, I want to say it was academics who reported that um, Drake released that 100 gigs kind of content pack mm-hmm. to kind of prove to his label that he could move units without their support. Do you mm-hmm. believe that? Especially with what we bro- the news we broke here about how, you know, Meta str- struck a deal. With the, uh, I think it could be true yeah. because we haven't seen him or anybody of his magnitude do anything like that. Just give out content for free. 
right? So I do think there is some truth to it. I think it could be true. And also, I believe Academic has been one of the more credible sources throughout this oh, beef. Oh, absolutely. If not the I, most credible yeah, source. I don't like, want to take from his year. We know that. he has a relationship with Drake, so who knows how we got that information. But it does make sense that Drake has been dropping songs, three packs, two packs, mm -hmm. features, content on the burner account. Like he's been very visible and nothing seems to be sticking. Nothing seems to be charting. So maybe he was also fighting Kendrick Lamar and then say, you know what? Now, fuck you label. Let me go do what I got to do. Because yeah. in the text that he had with one of his ex, ex shorties, I can't keep up with this guy's work. <laughs> um, but he said something in the text along the lines of, um, I'm a slave. I'm in a slave deal. Touring. So once I finish this deal, and, and I'm paraphrasing. When was it? Um, was it like a while ago or like literally this was year? Was it like the last month or two? Oh, okay. I, yeah, he, yeah. he was talking to a woman who, who was trying to see him and he was like, hey, um, I'm, I'm in a slave deal with uh, Rock, not Rock Nation. Uh, uh, the Torn people. Yes. Uh, what's it's the something Torn people's name again? Uh, what's the name Nation? Oh my God. Why are we having these brain farts? Live Nation. I was going to say United Nation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yo, I mean, but with Live Nation, with Live US, Nation, I'm, I'm in a slave deal with Live Nation. Live Nation, they are like the number one go-to um, company for like touring yeah, and, and putting concerts, people shows. And, and, and venues and everything. And we know Drake has been touring his whole life, it seems like. Mm -hmm. He hasn't stopped. So it does make sense. Maybe he's trying to fill quotas. Maybe he's trying to get out of his situation. Um, but it is interesting to kind of see how everything is, is, is unfolding. I could definitely see a world where... Uh, Meta and UMG struck a deal, but it doesn't necessarily behoove the artist under y UMG. So again, I'm not taking it off the table. Definitely interesting because he's not the only big artist that is doing this. J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar has done it throughout the beef. Kanye. So Kanye, of course, right? It's very interesting. You also mentioned Future mm -hmm. and how Future reposted this tweet of Young Thug. Mm -hmm. And people are saying that Future should keep the same energy with future that we did with Cole. In and I don't know. I'm, I'm here to debunk it, actually. I do know what they're saying. They're basically saying that future should probably stand on the beef. Hey, he, yo. My Jesus. fault. That was wild. Yes. But I mean, you know, my fuck fault. it. The battle. Like that sometimes. I just had to get the that battle. Out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Standing on the beef is crazy. Because we, we know how Cole took it, right? Uh -huh. Cole. Whoa. Damn, yo, you old Dean. <laughs> yeah, you, you going crazy? You going crazy? It's one of them <laughs> days, y'all. My fault. I'm just loose. Uh -huh. hey, oh, oh shit. my goodness. I did that on purpose. Uh. <laughs> but no, people is uh, telling others that future should keep the same energy. Okay. And I think that's solely because it looks as if he wants to kumbaya hash things out, uh -huh. shake hands, and piece it up. I'm here to tell y'all, no. <laughs> I'm here to tell y'all that it's not the same. Um, J. Cole put a song out, took it back. We already discussed all of this shit. But Future stood on it. Future followed mm -hmm. through. Didn't he drop like another project after that? He dropped a whole nother out. We still don't trust you. Boom, what's up? Yeah, like yeah, he did a lot. I don't see similarities here. I, he was like, I don't see similarities here. I do, I do know Cole was involved in his own ways, like first person shooter, blah, 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 whatever. Yeah. But like Future was involved, involved in this battle. He started so, it. He started yeah, it. Yeah, it kicked off with like that. <laughs> and that was his song. It. Nah, you got to so, get you got to get your dream have, uh, Dreamville hive, yo. What's up with that, man? But, but, I'm seeing a lot of that. Yo. Keep, keep the same energy. Keep the same energy when it came to Future and Cole. I'm like, Ugh, guys, that's not the same that thing. That makes no sense, please. He, J. Cole <laughs> reneged. <laughs> no, but like, so I want to ask you guys, like, yeah. should, should Drake ever forgive these peers? He's gonna I mean, need to. I think the does only he have to? <laughs> He's gonna have to because if they really like yeah. were on the hate train of like you come to Atlanta when you need a check back, like if if they were <laughs> singing along to that, should he forgive them like a future or should he really be like always remember what they did? I don't know, but he does need them. But also, it's like how do you forgive all these friends that like stabbed you in the back? I think I the know. only person he shouldn't forgive is Kendrick Lamar or Rick Ross. Yeah, because yeah, they didn't really went at it. He probably not shouldn't forgive Rick, Rick Ross either. I'm not mad at the Rick Ross one. Yeah, yeah. So those two should, names. Yeah. So he should. So Drake should forgive Future. He should forgive. I'm Metro, not gonna say Metro. should. I'm gonna say he could. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say he should, but I think there's a world in which he could See, forgive Future my, because he even acknowledged me and Future never really been through it. We ain't been through yeah. shit. Like, yeah. oh, this came from left field. Why are we fighting? It's so basically like, what he said on the song. For like the betterment of music, like his music and his career and his mm. and everyone involved, mm. it would be better if he does forgive like the metros of the future. See, yeah. My only beef with, with Cole, you know, was that 
he didn't of course he didn't follow through you know what i'm saying but at the end of the day when i had friends cause even last week when we spoke about like friend dynamics and things of that nature i think it's healthy to discuss things with your friends now, granted, sometimes it's not always done in the most healthy manner, right? Like we mm -hmm. said, the battle got a little yeah, they crazy. Were fighting, yeah. They were fighting, right? But see, with Future, he expressed how he felt about something. If it's allegedly about a young woman as to why they were beefing, he kept telling us, mm -hmm. that's mine. He, get, he went on the second album, doubled down on it like, yo, that's still mine. Again, if it is uh, Drake that he's talking about. So I'm never mad at an artist expressing how they feel to get through something and actually one day realign with their friend. My only uh, beef, okay, you yeah. see what I'm saying? My only yeah, beef yeah. is when I don't tell you exactly how I feel about something and now I'm acting as if I'm okay, but I'm not okay. Mm -hmm. So because I'm not okay, I'm going to keep talking about it and mentioning it when in actuality, you could have really told me how you felt, even if it got a little bit ugly and we could have got past it. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm not mad at the Drake thing. Drake, <laughs> shit, he shot at all them niggas. <laughs> he got it all out. And you, I, I get it. Like you, The weekend, he can't piece it up with The weekend. Why he can't piece it up with The weekend? He can piece up with the weekend. What did they do again? Like, why are they fighting? Is he, it over a girl he, as well? No, nah, that's no. Yeah, I think so. I, I, really? I think it's a little bit of both because I, he and like labels. He mentioned he stardom. On, he mentioned on the song. I think it's a combination of both. Yeah. Obviously, your idols become rivals. We know that the weekend was signed to Drake at some point. Then they yeah, left. Whatever yeah. the case may be, they and became an made immersive up. star. He's after a superstar. He left. He's like, a superstar. Can sell out more than Drake for sure. Mm -hmm. But I think it maybe stemmed and started from a girl, a woman, whatever. Because Drake did say, "Yo, I just tongue kissed her. I ain't really do nothing. Are you mad? I just lip lock with her. Like he told people what it was, you know." On the surface, it could be deeper than that, and also the Toronto Canadian ties. So yeah, maybe they have bigger issues. Um, but like you also said, I think it could be a jealousy factor, right? Like you put somebody on, and then they kind of dismiss surpass you, you, and then they surpass you in certain yeah. ways, right? Like that could also be a thing. I just, I, I don't Man, think certain face. certain people. It just doesn't even make sense and it doesn't even benefit me. Like it doesn't benefit me for me and Kendrick at this point Never. to reconcile. It doesn't benefit me if me and The Weeknd reconcile. They haven't made music together in over a decade. I don't know. I feel like... Are you talking about Drake and The Weeknd reconciling? Yeah, 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 yeah. I could see where that could be beneficial. Their songs... They could literally make a diamond album together. I'm telling you, they so could. So that is where it would be beneficial. And they like I like where, where like Alex made me realize like it would be okay for Drake to reconcile with all these people that you know stabbed him in the back because they kind of hashed it out. Y'all gotta like know they, they they hashed it out and they're like, you know what? If they could really get over it, right. we could grow and let's let's forgive each other. Absolutely. Right, so let's let's go through yeah. a list really quick of the people and you let me know if they should forgive or if he should forgive them or not. Okay. So we started out with Kendrick Lamar. Never. Never. The Kendrick Lamar literally had people listening to Drake's music differently. I would never forgive a nigga for that. Ready? That's just, that's just, <laughs> just yeah, yeah, yeah. it was too much done. Uh, wait, so nah. we, no. Nah. No? Okay. Yeah, nah. We said Rick Ross. I don't think so. I think their art, their music together, from a, Can, from a selfish standpoint, yes. Let's give a little background But from to what it. it is, right. no. But let's give a little background to as you're going. We did hear him mention on the song, uh, this track, that he was mad at Drake because he sent their homie, mm -hmm. their mutual homie, French Montana, a cease and desist. Mm -hmm. yeah. Back to Reggie's point about how we got through it, right? If I told you how I, this was the real, and again, I don't know if that's Rick Ross's real reason, but he did say that was the reason for him. One of the things. That was one of the things, right? Yeah, yeah. I could definitely see a world where I'm like, you know what? I was mad at you for how you treated a mutual friend, um, but if you piecing it up with the whole crew now, it's love and we could get past that. But it got too personal. He started okay. talking about my nose job. He started calling me the white, white boy. boy. He started okay. telling me that I'm only accepted in the culture because of him. It got a little bit more personal. Sure. So yes, on the surface, on the music, he said, oh, you were shooting that French. You was acting weird with French, so fuck mm -hmm. you. No, but then it went to Rick Ross antics, which is social media, <laughs> which is degrading, which is jokes, which is poking fun at who he is. His cover art mm -hmm. was Drake. Looking like a white man. <laughs> oh my right? gosh, like, that seemed like so long ago. Damn. It was. It's just, it? it was just a little bit more personal. So for me, I don't think him and Rick Ross can reconcile. I actually okay, think, that, based on everything you do, you said, I actually do think that they can reconcile because with the social media, they they started posting pictures of each other's houses, making fun of each other. But for me, that made it even more like WWE, where it was just kind <laughs> of like very surface level, yeah. and then they were like, you know what, we're just playing. Like, let's. I feel like they really can one day reconcile because okay. of that like, Not like mad at that like that's for they were both in that sense uh had forgivable offenses to each other because it wasn't like it wasn't like uh, it wasn't like uh rick ross was the one that was like hey, yo what it was sorry it wasn't like kendrick 
I'm bugging. It wasn't like Rick Ross was the one that had people calling him a pedophile. Yeah. And not for nothing, Rick Ross did not start beefing with Drake when Drake was beefing with Meek. That surprised me. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's like, why now? He was still trying to be a... But that's when they were you know. actively making music. They still had the relationship. Rick Ross and Drake, I don't think they've made put out a real hit or a real song together in quite some time. So yeah. a part of the theory at that point but in time, Meek a few making, months ago... But Meek was making money at that time. Yeah, but we also know that Rick <laughs> Ross and Meek Mill, they had their own friction. They definitely so did. So it yeah. didn't behoove Rick Ross at that time to side with Meek Mill, even though that was his artist. I'm still an artist, so I'm not going to jump out the window. It's the same thing that 50 Cent said about Birdman and Lil Wayne. Like, they're going to reconcile at some point. So everybody commenting on it, y'all look crazy because when they make up, where do you sit with them? And so I think Rick Ross kind of took that approach at that time. Now, I feel it, but Meek and Rick Ross just did an album recently. Mm -hmm. So that means to tell me that though they had a falling out, there was still enough love there for them to still continue to do business. And the fact that he never went against Oz with Drake, that means like you probably have a deeper you know, appreciation for each other. To your point, maybe it's because Rick Ross is a little bit more active with releasing music at that time. Rick Ross is still putting on, I'm sure he's working on an album right now, you know, but I'm not mad if you don't see that. Give me another name. ASAP Rocky. Yeah, nah, that's dead. <laughs> that's that's a that's relationship dead. where I see if they do make up, I don't see nah. the point of it. Yo, Reggie, that's you... Dead. That's dead. I, you are the most positive person that in the world. That shit is dead. What? Like, <laughs> that there is, is no way on earth that those Maybe two men guy thing. ever make up. No, yeah, I said if they do make up, I see, like, the end of my sentence was like, I don't see the benefit in that. Like, I don't see what the point of it. I don't think there's an if is what I'm saying. Oh. But I understand. Like, there is no if over, with over. some of these. Like, yeah, I think it's done for that. That's done. Also, but I like, appreciate your optimism. My that's favorite done. moment was like when... Drake tried to diss ASAP Rock and like they've dissed each other like 30 times, but like when he was like, Oh yeah, and I fucked Rihanna, it wasn't that good, by the way. We're like, what the fuck? Like, Drake, shut up. Anti. 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 Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that's um, dead. We said the weekend. Yeah. We said the weekend. I think there's hope there. Uh, I don't know. I just Again, don't think about the Not recently. Not 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 anytime soon, but down the line. Like the people weekend? like Kendrick. Because Bella Hadid, he did the whole Bella Hadid thing. Women. He didn't you sign, just can't he say certain things OVO. about me or to me, and I'm ever gonna forget. Maybe I'm just he did different call in the that weekend way. Gay. Like maybe <laughs> I'm did. just different. He did? There's he did. just certain things you be... can't do to me as yeah. a quote unquote friend, associate. Like it just doesn't matter, especially when I'm him. Yeah. Right? Like, yes, maybe I quote unquote need you for a certain cultural cachet and the way that people claim Drake needed them, but he's still Drake at the end of the day. I don't need anybody in, in my yeah. head. So if you say anything about me in a certain way, in a certain light, it's fuck you for life. Right. Yeah. I think the only person, because Future never really said fuck you. He kind of just was like, I ain't fucking with you like that. And I'm going to let another nigga stall on you on my soul. Oh, damn. I said it again. <laughs> so, I told you. It's okay. It's all right, brother. Same, but at least I'm catching okay, myself. Brother. Y'all not catching me. You know what? It's, it's, yeah, I call you're right. me. Hold on. I, 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 give, I have a little, bit, a little bit of encouragement. By now, on average, he usually averages about 15 by now. That's true. He's only having two. That's pretty good, okay. Simon. So, okay. Give yourself well. some credit. You're trending well. Okay. Where am I? I'm, about, I'm about like four or five, right? About four? <laughs> about, about, about eight. Yeah, you just yeah. can't say certain things about me and I forgive you. Yeah. So that's why I'm kind of surprised at some of the optimism that you guys share. Yeah, but if it is about, like you said, women and things of that nature, I think they get past that eventually. And, okay. and to Real remember, uh, The weekend didn't sign with OVO when yeah. Drake felt like he was the one that blew him up. Not for nothing, probably one of the best decisions The weekend ever made. For sure. And not because Drake is not talented or anything like that. We've just seen other artists that have been on OVO and kind of like... Not that they get hindered, but maybe they don't reach the amount of superstardom that maybe a Drake has reached or shoved. eclipsed. They we need a, we need to do a case study on that. But Jordan, <laughs> Division, Division, P and D, uh, Roy Woods, Roy Woods. Yep. You know, four what's, bats. Go, what's going on? Now, four bats was a one EP deal. He's I love Matt McConan. McConan. Damn. There was a plethora of artists, good artists like that, that have been under that umbrella. So I'm never mad at the weekend for like, nah, I'm not doing yeah. this, bro. He sells out arenas, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> stadiums. Yeah. Like this is different. Like he leaves like a trail of artists. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. To to be seen. Um, For sure. I don't know if y'all want to talk about the Kendrick article. We can talk about that, but I do want to shout out because I I, I love. We were talking about our faves linking up, and <laughs> we do miss when Drake and Future and Metro, all of these guys linked up. I am happy to announce, and I want all of y'all to watch this. I know we've never done homework. Like, we never assigned homework on the pod, yeah. but 
I'm going to request that we all can do this collectively. And I need y'all to just say yes. No, so it, dep- it no, depends what it is. No, for real. I would never see you in the wrong <laughs> You going to copy my shit? No, we going to do it together. Like, I oh. just want us to really watch and applaud the two legends. I think I know who you're about to say. That are Ray J. And Orlando Brown. And Orlando Brown. Fucking new. All right, let's get, let's, come on. Let's clap it up for these two guys. <laughs> Finally getting on camera. Yeah. I see you know, that. I cannot Marco. wait to yeah. watch with Funny Marco. Shout out yeah. to him for mm-hmm. doing that. I'm really not a fan of like what he does, but I'm glad he's <laughs> you able to bring it. Wait, why? Wait, why you're don't you like him? You're such a hater. Some niggas just don't. Fuck! I'm done again! <laughs> you're done. Oh my it's okay. god. It's okay, buddy. Out. Yeah, you're done. Just keep saying it now. Some people, some bros. Nah, that's three. Just keep saying we'll it now. We'll start next week. We'll start again next I'm a, week. I'm going to nah, do better. Stick to your guns. Nah. Some put your guns people, down. Uh-huh. It's, kind of, it's the Tracy Morgan effect. Like, you just don't just think not it's funny? Me. Yeah, just, okay. yeah, it's just not for me. I'm not trying to I'm diss not him. Mad at it. Like, shout out to him. He's killing it. Clearly, he got my goats on his platform. He does. Like, so yeah, he's doing his thing. But I want us as a family to just consume that content, oh, come man. back with notes, mm-hmm. come back with a, a good segment to dedicate to Orlando Brown and the Ray J face-off. Wait, like my super what is it? Is it like Who's a show? Viral? Is it <laughs> interview? I think it's an interview Any- with oh, the yeah, two of them just in it. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's, let's check that out. Alex, do you have a Chick-fil-A hat on? <laughs> no. I have a clientele hat on. Isn't what that, the fuck? Isn't that Cincinnati? <laughs> no, it's Let a remix see. version of Cincinnati. Put yeah. your head down. No, no, no freaky. <laughs> Save on. Save on the Did your intrusive thoughts? Intrusive thoughts. It did, did, this, did that shit I'm just so win? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm did. like, funny, Marco, is that Chick fil A? Damn. Nah, Say, I, told you, I thought you got coaching. a new gig. <laughs> no, I would have told you. Okay. I would have cut you in on the chicken. For sure. You like that? <laughs> see what you did there? You like that, right? I do. But yeah, let's make sure we consume that. And while we're talking about my faves, I also want to give a shout out, a special, special shout out. Y'all know how I feel. About the Wayne's family, uh, Damon Wayne's is back. Yes, he is. Damon Wayne's is his back, son, right? And his son, they got a show yes. called Papa's House. Yeah, um, I'm always once a year. I do want to just big up the cast, the legacy of In Living Color and the Wayne's Bros. Support. Right, Marlon Wayne, sure. super active. The mold but, for yeah. SNL. The, the mold for SNL. For the mold sure. for like culture, comedic sure. culture. Sure. They're like the Jacksons of comedy, uh, royalty, uh, legends, and him having the show. I think everybody's a fan of my wife and kids. If you're not a fan oh, of my yeah. wife and kids, you just don't like sitcoms. Because I think that's show. undisputedly one it of the greatest might sitcoms be, ever. Uh, do it. Say it. Let's do it. Say it. It might got... be top three, uh-uh. not one or three. Because <laughs> 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 you know my top has to be Fresh Prince. But yeah, yo, yeah. my wife and kids is like Mad really funny. up there. It it I is. feel like pe- nah, people always though. say it's slept on, but it's really not slept on because people appreciate now, it. But it's never regarded as the GOAT. People will, say, really people will say our, our age is showing and that um That's great TV. What, the wife but that was a little later. That was in the two thousands. Mm-hmm. A yeah, little bit later. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, I, I'm just happy to see him. I know he had some health issues. Um I, know oh, I didn't know it, that. Yeah, he had some health issues at some point. Um he's also I mean they're a little bit older, so they're not as active, yeah. they're not as visible, but to see him come back, it's almost like LeBron James and Bronny, mm-hmm. except one son and 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 successor is qualified in his field like damon waynes jr he does that and he should be and he's doing everything like it's just not pure nepotism with him he does have talent where you know lebron but i I love lebron i I ain't never seen a second round pick get a four get a guarantee don't do that don't do that shut up let me finish i I ain't never seen a second round four this is not his best episode Ah! that's hate i ain't never one more time you ready all right I ain't never seen a second round pick get a four year contract in the NBA. Yeah, no, nah, and sometimes you gotta flex your muscles. Like I get it, but again, we shout out father son duos. I, I just, I just want to show some love to the Wayans. I want to show some love to all of those guys. I'm just happy to see the people that we grew up on yeah. back on TV. Absolutely, getting shows on CBS, major networks, mm-hmm. just putting money behind. You know the the black. The Black Dollar, Black Absolutely. Legacy. Speaking of Black Dollar, Black Legacy, R- Reggie, where you at? Oh, you pointed to Reggie when you talk about Black Dollar? <laughs> black Legacy. And, and Black Legacy. Yo, why I did that? Okay. Oh, I'll point it right there. No, because I want this really inspired me to do another Blindly Rank segment, but oh, I want to do it at shit. the end but because you, you clearly have a topic and we should do that first. Okay. Oh my God. You are just so thoughtful. Now... <laughs> You were talking about black culture, black love, all of that shit, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> no, I ain't saying nothing about no black love. But okay. right. Oh, you, oh, you gave it away. What's, what's wrong with black love? Nah, yeah, keep going. That's what's crazy. Wrong? That's crazy. No, it's just, these are a lot of the sentiments we heard repeated from uh, Kendrick Lamar. I don't know if it's necessarily black, but just cultural. I thought he liked white girls. Kenny? Yeah. 
That's what they were saying. That's what they said. I need the proof. Oh, that's no, what they no, were he was saying. saying. He, he said, said like he went through a phase oh, nah, nah, and nah, he nah. cheated. No, <laughs> no, that was on his album. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, I went to Copenhagen. I fucked the white bitch. Like nah. Drake said it too. <laughs> <laughs> he was pulling it from what Kendrick shared on his album, oh, uh, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. You're funny. I didn't think about that. I'm like, nah, it's white, black. I didn't know you know that. He might anyway. happen. Swirling. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about um, black media and the reception it's received when it comes to artists, right? Like, we've seen people like uh, artists like Russ talking down on journalists as of recently. We've seen. Just um, the bigger acts, the bigger people in our space not sit down to do interviews with us. Um, again, I don't necessarily feel this way. When I say us, I mean the culture. Recently, as you both know, Kendrick Lamar sat down with Bazaar. Now, Bazaar is the mother. Hmm? Is the mother. Is the, Harper's Bazaar. Harper's Bazaar. I'm sorry. I thought you was talking about D12 Eminem man. She's a nigga. Oh, so shoot. Get up. <laughs> no, for real. They won't get up. I remember I D12. Thought you were talking about fat, <laughs> get up, get fat up. bro. Get out. Right. Fat bro, bizarre. Stay focused. Stay focused. Okay, Kendrick is not there. Okay. <laughs> now, again, bizarre is the mother, Reggie, you correct, correct me if I'm wrong, two fashion magazines. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the big boy. It's the one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the people. Uh, women pull a lot of style tips from there, et cetera. Like they be holding on like the galas and shit. So, Absolutely. Yeah. That's them. They're known for that. <laughs> <laughs> what is so fucking funny? <laughs> she was like, shit. I'm sorry. <laughs> so Kendrick Lamar looks like he's starting to roll out of his album potentially. Okay. And he sat down at Bazaar with SZA, who was of course a part of TDE. And I saw some people like Elliot Wilson a little bit flustered that. Oh wait, what did he say? I didn't. Know, I didn't see what he said. He didn't say anything specifically, but I know Elliot. <laughs> Shout out to Elliot, yo. Yeah. And I could tell when he saw. You know, he's actually one of the last few people that actually truly appreciate print yeah, and not just video interviews, just print interviews mm -hmm. as well. So I know he felt the way when he saw someone that had a year like Kendrick Lamar had and didn't come down to sit down with one of us or say things of that nature because that has been his sentiments. I think Elliot, I don't think he really cares about print. You think it's him? Yeah, I think you he cares about, come sure. talk to me. For sure. That? It's yeah, not, yeah. yo, I want to do an article on you in print and print <laughs> media. Where? I think it's more so I have the credentials to do that. To do that. Mm -hmm. So why not come to me also, to do it? I will also say to add on to that, like, you know, Elliot's vibe of what he's saying is Bro. like this whole thing of like artists interviewing each other is like, it's you know, too it, soft. it comes out cool. And also if it's on video from a content perspective, sometimes it could be amazing. But it's like, like, it's like. It's just content then. Is that's not like a interview interview. Yeah. Like SZA is not like an that. interviewer. Even though she's very good, she's very inquisitive, she's great, but like that is just a conversation. It's not an interview like a journalist sitting down asking yeah. you tough questions. Like it it's not that. So It's not like when Torre sat down with all cats. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> like for my fucking life. It's, it's not like you know what I'm saying. Like sometimes you really gotta ask the real questions. How young do you like him? Oh my god. What? Damn. Oh that's what she, that's what he asked him. Oh no, he did. Oh, he did? He, yes, okay. he asked him that no, did, to his face. No, like did. that's <laughs> real journalism. <laughs> like, that is, that is not that gonna is. ask Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> hey yo, do you like fucking these white girls on the side? I do think obviously <laughs> that is what, like his first interview back since the battle. Yeah. That is why they did it in this way. Because it's SZA, like they're not gonna yeah. ask anything crazy. Yeah. And he asked him she asked him directly about Oh no! Actually, no. You continue your point, Alex. I, no, you're fine. Like, since right, dated right. Drake, yeah. and she also has a relationship with Kendrick. Mm -hmm. So, how are we really gonna get to the bottom of how he truly <laughs> feels if she's compromised in that way? And she's also an active artist. Yeah, and, and she's she not did a slime me out. She just slime me out with Drake. So yeah, like, and also there's just yeah. been well, Alex started this topic with mm -hmm. saying like there's been a lot of like just commotion and disrespect with like hip hop journalism. People saying it sucks now, the state of it is trash, whatever. But it's also because like these artists don't want to sit down with real journalists anymore. Like Drake, uh, just about Cole, to say Kendrick. Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. Continue. Like no, they continue. they yeah. don't want to. There are journalists, mm -hmm. but they don't want to sit down with them anymore because they don't want to be asked these tough questions. So I, we too messy. Whose fault is it? Like I I completely agree. I think we're a bit too miss messy in this space. And you guys would know. No, I'm gonna ask Reggie. Let me not look at Sable. Every time, <laughs> every time I think of some white boy shit, I be thinking he know everything. But I, I gotta remember he's from the trenches too. He don't know everything. Everything. He be trying to act like he's not from the trenches. Don't let him fool y'all, y'all. I don't know what's anyway, about to happen. Reggie, you're an editor. You've been a journalist for years now. Do you think that white media publications treat their greats, their artists, etc., 
with a bit more grace when it comes to print media or interviews in general, as opposed to us with the salaciousness and things of that nature. Like how do, how do those interviews usually go for like a pink or usually go for a Sabrina Carpenter or do like, do they get asked the hard hitting questions? Do they get asked the, the, the messy stuff, things of that nature that they've been a part of? I don't know. Cause like when I think about media, yeah. like a magazine, mm-hmm. like let's say like a Vogue or something, if you're on the cover, that interview, like a cover story, it's about like you. So it is in like a better light, like a very, just like painting the full picture. We're doing yeah. a profile piece on them. So yeah. I do think those are nice. But in terms of like media and journalism in general with white stars, mm-hmm. I think they're like very harsh on them. Like tabloids, like spreading rumors, like posting pictures of their body, their family, paparazzi pictures. So I do think it's harsh all around. Okay. But 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 what know. about when they're directly being interviewed from these publications? Mm. That's a great question because I was going to give you the example of uh, Harvey Levin. From See, TMZ. you should have asked him. Oh, <laughs> shit, he didn't know. I, I was going to oh, give shit, you that example one? of Harvey Levin. Like, yeah. And I know he has, he's a considered TMZ. a producer. That's TMZ, yeah, TMZ. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And we just seen what he did with Liam Payne. Right. So clearly he's pretty consistent and maybe he's not the person getting the articles. Obviously he has a staff. Yeah, he's yeah. just the brand of it. Mm-hmm. But when you are the head of the snake, your company is a reflection of you. Sure. So if you had those type of morals and ethics, then your company wouldn't move in a way that they do. But clearly anybody can get it when you're Harvey Levin. <laughs> yeah. But even that is more like they report on salaciousness like a tabloid, right? Yeah. I'm talking more like a... Journalism. Yeah, like uh, what's the guy's Paris name? Paris Hilton, D- Duran, uh, uh, Elvis Duran. Oh, from the Z Morning. From yeah, Z-Morning. like things, like yeah, like an Elvis yeah, yeah. Duran. Yeah, yeah. Like, do, do when he sits down with the top pop artists, mm-hmm. is he asking them this latest stuff? So, Pierre, if you don't mind, can you look up like just prominent journalists, uh, mm-hmm. maybe entertainment journalists, mm-hmm. because I right. think there's a line that's blurred with a Howard Stern, a Elvis Duran. These are radio personalities. These are per, you know what I'm saying? Like, like late night these hosts. are a broadcasting personalities. Right, right. And maybe they do have some type of background in journalism and broadcasting. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I think journalism is a little bit different than broadcaster. And mm-hmm. I think that's where the crossroad of an Elliot Wilson finds himself, where he's a traditional journalist, mm-hmm. but now we're in the digital age of content creation. So he's trying to find his way on how to also be a broadcaster and an entertainer and a personality. Right. Right? Some names whenever you're ready. Let's do it. Let's hear some white uh, journalists. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Going down the list, we got Alex Haley, Amy Goodman, uh, Ann Ford, Arianne Huffington, uh, Christiane Amanpour. Yeah. None of these folk. Uh, <laughs> Diane Sawyer. I know Diane Sawyer. Katie Couric. Okay. Lisa Lang. Diane. Let's stick to Diane. Okay. I love Diane. Because I ain't know none of the other ones. <laughs> yeah. I know Katie Keurig too. Yeah, yeah. Do you really? NBC, yeah. Okay. Yo, good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Alex. these are journalists. You get what I'm saying? And maybe that's why we don't know him as well yeah, yeah, as yeah. I know Ryan Seacrest. Right? <laughs> yeah. A little more front facing. Yeah, he does yeah. radio, right? So it's kind you kind of blur the lines a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, what would we consider, and y'all tell me, like a sway? Mm-hmm. Or even Angie, Angie Martinez. But that's. Right, Angie Martinez is a journalist. She is okay. She's I'm, like I'm the gold asking. standard, honestly. Yeah. Got it. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Diana. She used to do print media. Um, no, she was uh, radio. Sway, I know. Okay. Used to do MTV News and a plethora of other yeah. things. See, that's what I'm saying. Mm. It, it's kind of it, it's Diana and Katie. Yeah. Also, Diana and Katie also they also do TV. You can also be. Yeah, I do not know them. I would, I would call Sway a journalist, definitely. Yeah, strictly like an interviewer. Yeah, but I don't know if that means you're a journalist, right? Like and the lines are kind of blurred. Yeah. In this there's, a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of overlap because yeah. I would I would have loved to see uh, him speak to maybe Ebony magazine and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. Correct, but I'm also just trying to think about. Yeah, why are you laughing, nigga? Don't laugh about you know, <laughs> yeah. laughing at that point. You don't support black <laughs> owned publications. It's ironic that you asked. The black rapper that likes white women to go sit yeah. at Ebony. Who said he like white women? He, he said, said it. No, no, I think, no, no, he, I think Did you listen to the song? I think he like fucked up and like was talking about he him fucking up and like yeah. fucking uh, He was talking about woman. he fucked up for his ancestors and how he had a... That's what we all say. That's what he said. We all say that. I'm telling you what he said. You, you never thought that? Nah. When you s- s- <laughs> fell in the milk? Yeah, had slip in that skim milk, <laughs> slipped on ice, <laughs> <laughs> turned it into black ice. You ain't tell your man. Yeah, but, but had he, to. But he didn't, he didn't marry one. Though. Oh, but like yeah. speaking, you know, Ebony Magazine, but like Beyonce uh-huh. gave 
Essence magazine right, cover. Right, like an Essence. That's what and I meant. And that yeah. is huge. Right, that, right. That was beautiful. That's kind of what I meant. Though. I'm year, sorry. I apologize. Year. So like an Essence, just anything in no, that Ebony vein. No, Ebony as well. Ebony yeah, is a black yeah. publication, yeah. Right, right. Ebony I didn't know it existed. Vibe magazine. You didn't know Ebony existed? V- vibe. I didn't know. No, I, I <laughs> yeah. thought Ebony was extinct. They still, I'm, I'm yeah, not even being funny. They actually did a top 100 for prominent people. Yeah, I'm really not even being funny. I just, you know. That's why I Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen Ebony magazine in a minute. I know Essence is still out here flourishing and doing their thing. I really didn't know Ebony was still a thing. And I only asked y'all this because that's what I thought about. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Nah, I'm with you. That's that's the first thing I thought about when I found out that he sat down with Bizarre. I'm thinking, I'm like, damn. Do the prominent people in our culture feel like we just too messy on both print, video, and digital? Like just across all levels, or they feel like they just can't come sit down with us because they gonna get some questions that's just probably gonna go left and they won't be able to control the narrative. Artists also don't want to be challenged, which yeah. is why they go into these is, yeah. controlled environments. And so, yes, I think there is an aspect of uh, personalities and whatever you want to call us, content creators, poking at some of the salacious topics, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But Artists also want to be in control of the environment. Like, Elliot talks about his interview with Drake. Right. The only reason that interview came out is because Drake signed off on it. Yeah. Drake edited, edited it. Drake it. approved it. It happened at Drake's house. Right? Like, it was in the most possibly controlled environment that it could be for it to even come out. So, yeah. I think, yes, we as media do a poor job of reporting and asking the proper questions. But I also think artists are very protective of themselves for whatever reason to where they don't give people a fair shot to report in a way that journalism is supposed to be done. But I I hear what you're saying to an extent because a lot of these artists that we hold credible to us or like just big in the space, they have sat down with our culture before. On the rise. On the rise, right. Like so, years ago, yeah. Yeah, so there's got to there's gotta be some turning point where they go, yo, every time I, I come to that area, it, it turns into something else. Because so they have done it before. Does it come off inauthentic when it seems too curated? It Definitely. can. It I can. think so, yeah. yeah. When you say too curated, you mean like specific? Like, hey, like mm-hmm. you're going, they're going into an interview and like there's a list of things. All right, don't talk about this. Oh, don't yeah. ask this. I expect that. Yeah. But, but I like, expect that. You still consume it though? Yeah, for sure. I expect that. My whole thing is knowing that they could still tell uh, Essence Magazine or Ebony, Mag- Ebony Magazine, hey, don't include that. And still they mm-hmm. don't decide to do so. Mm-hmm. It makes me think, like, what is, like, what's that about? And I also think there's a fine line. I think if you are somebody who's interviewing Kendrick Lamar, anything that you've said on a song should be in bounds for me to discuss with you mm-hmm. right right now if i'm talking about your personal life or you getting you know uh and i don't want to put this on kendrick but any artist who may have been drunk driving mm-hmm. and now i'm going to interview it's not really my place as a journalist to talk about why were you drunk dri-? like yeah. that has nothing that's to do with messy, the art yeah. right that's yeah. a little bit messy that's saying. a little bit nasty but if you are in a song saying hey he's a pedophile and my job is to talk to you and be a journalist and investigate mm-hmm. i get to ask you hey so why did you call him a pedophile in mm-hmm. line 18 on your <laughs> biggest song ever yeah right like that's literally journal- like that is such a journalistic question like yeah. literally what it is but, but they don't want to face that they don't want yeah. to be put in a position where they I'm have split. to answer those things i'm split because i kind of do like for these artists to feel a bit comfortable real talk I, I that's why i wasn't so mad when drake sat down with yachty you know like you can learn a lot from a person without when them they're... directly answering certain things right like for instance like read between the lines almost. yeah like it's hard to be a different version of yourself with long-term content i'm not saying it can't be done mm. but it's really hard because now those first 10 minutes even if you're putting on a show we can see that mm-hmm. after a while you either see this individual get more personable or or more personal and be for real and like, be for real but, you know what i'm saying so if if it has to be somebody you're familiar with like a scissor or for drake with have it be a little yachty i'm not necessarily mad at it because we might learn some shit we might you know would have never been asked before also like, the relationship. i'm trying to like empathize with the artists like these superstars and like why they want they don't want to sit with media anymore because it's like every little thing they say is spun taken to like a completely different headline all these blogs are picking it up and it's like yo i didn't even fucking say that so mm. i can imagine it does get annoying and that's why they don't want to speak to us anymore but it's like, but I don't agree with this whole hoopla about like mm. rap journalism is dead is because no, like no. if like Drake gave some gave a good journalist the opportunity to interview him literally about the beef about everything that happened to him i feel like that would be a phenomenal interview if you went to a really good journalist we're not talking about going to these like 
streamers and freaking content creators we're talking about real journalists if that were to happen i feel like that would be real journalism and it'll be great like there's yeah. so many people who could do that i think reggie yeah. is qualified to interview any artist absolutely in any genre at any time <gasps> absolutely Thanks, no it's true and reggie does a good job of not also being informed but just making a person feel a bit more comfortable. Yeah. Like we see the artists who have to do the Breakfast Club, uh, Ebro in the morning, this over here, Big Boy in the morning, and you can see how forced their responses are. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, cool, yeah, you were able to secure them on mm -hmm. the platform, on the show, that's dope, that's cool, but you weren't really able to pull them from them because they wasn't comfortable. Yeah. So that's kind of where I'm split. Not everything is malicious. And sure. I also yeah. think sure. delivery matters. Yeah. And I think intent matters. And Obviously, we're all doing this because there is a certain factor of wanting to get clicks and numbers and attention, but you can do it in a very genuine way. And I think Reggie personifies that in her journalism and yeah. how she goes about interviewing people. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. the, the, the people in the industry say, oh, everybody just wants clicks and everybody... No, you guys just are paying attention to that because that's what we do as humans. We always see the negative comments. Mm -hmm. We always see the negative posts before we see the people who are actually doing the work in the way that it's supposed to be done. Right. Like... There's nobody that could tell me that Reggie can't sit down with a Kendrick Lamar, a Drake, no. a J. Cole, and conduct a respectable interview and get to the things that the fans want to hear, get to the things that they may have to read between the lines. Like, you just can't convince me that that doesn't exist. And not just Reggie. I'm sure there's other art, I mean, uh, journalists out there who can conduct the interview in that way. But because they pay attention to the Joe Buttons, to the Charlemagnes, mm -hmm. to whoever it is that gets the headlines, and they consider Joe Budden a journalist, or they consider Charlemagne a journalist, they these are personalities, yeah. right? I don't, they, they're not, and I don't think they would consider themselves journalists. Like Nora used to say it all the time, "Hey, I'm a journalist. I'm a, you're not a journalist. You ask dope questions, you have great interviews, but what it is, the artistry of being a journalist is not what the people at the forefront of hip hop media are. And, and that's not okay. The wrong, and yeah, and it's that's not okay. Wrong with it's that. just not. You're There's not a journalist. Elements yeah. of it that, again, going back to our conversation of elements and genres and yeah. certain crafts. There's elements of it, right? I think, again, Charlemagne, Joe, Elliot, these guys are at the top of the class when it comes to conducting the interview and getting content from their subjects, whoever they sit across from. But at the end of the day, a real journalist, if the artists aren't doing their job to say, hey, I'm going to sit down with a real journalist and I'm going to go sit with Charlemagne or Joe, then that's on them for not doing their due diligence to go sit with somebody who's impartial and who just wants to get to the bottom of what it is that you talked about in your music. Like you've given us content for the year. You've given us content for 10 years, 10 years based man. on Shit. those five, six, seven, eight diss tracks. Absolutely. That there's gonna be somebody who really wants to understand. Like, all right, so where did your relationship go wrong with Drake, Kendrick? What what actually happened from you guys going on tour together to where you're calling him a pedophile on your biggest song ever? Or change. Like, what happened? Mm. What's That's the, a valid question story? that somebody who may not just want the headlines, but somebody who's a fan of the culture may want to know. Mm. And maybe you may feel like it's none of our business. Yeah. But for anybody to sit there and say, like, those people don't exist, the Reggies of the world don't exist, I think it's irresponsible. And it, it just shows the lack of effort that they put in to sourcing what's real and what's not. Wow, thanks guys. Real talk. That was so nice. But I feel like this that. is why, this is exactly why I just love Angie Martinez so much because she's like, she is very welcoming. She makes her guests feel very comfortable. But she she talks about some really tough shit with I them was just about throughout to the say. years. Like literally yeah. going to all the way to California to interview Tupac. Like she really does this shit, but mm -hmm. she's never like trying to get the click. So that's why to me she's a gold standard. And, and she does yeah. it in such a genuine way. Like the, the, the most uh, outstanding interview for me for Angie was how um, she was talking to Lauren London about, you know, everything that happened with Nipsey and yeah. just how she handled it with so much grace and tact. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, it was phenomenal. Well, fortunately, we did get to get some thoughts from Kendrick Lamar in this interview with him and SZA. Reggie, what did he say? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> let me get it. Let me get it out. And Damn. You're, and as you're pulling that out, I'll give you a, a few seconds. I, I read the article. I do like to read. Mm -hmm. it, it was a. Uh, you got glasses for a reason. Wow. Yeah, chill out. Found it. See, okay. see, wow. see, see you playing. Nah, them spectacles keep, work. Keep playing, nigga. <laughs> wow. Keep fucking playing, Yo, nigga. I'm your bro. Keep playing, nigga. I. Right. I'm not your bro. Got it, Reggie. What you were saying? So, well, I don't know if this is where you were specifically thinking of, but a lot something that caught a lot of traction within his interview with Harper's Bazaar, Kendrick Lamar's interview with Harper's Bazaar. Was when he was talking about not like us, and SZA asked what not like us meant to Kendrick, and he goes, 
in in parentheses laughing not like us well it's the energy of who i am <laughs> it's the type of man i present this man has morals he has values and he believes in something he stands on something he's not pandering he's a man who can recognize his mistakes and not be afraid to share the mistakes and can dig deep down into fear-based ideologies or experiences to be able to express them without feeling like he's less of a man Mm. And so people took that quote and they were like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> He's talking about accountability. There, there was another quote where he said he believes that love and war needs to flow through him as a human. That's real. You ain't and never that, had love and war flow through you, through your body. I, 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 I had, had that shit flow through my body. Wars within myself. <laughs> <laughs> no love, though. That's pain. Now I've had love, too. I'm, yeah, I'm in that phase. I'm in that yeah. era of my life right now where I really love me. So, That's why I did this. Are two? <laughs> I take it off now. So the, are the two? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the two, you want to take it off? Yeah. So okay. are the two? Y'all say, yo, stay up, pay attention. <laughs> so are the two of y'all say that? Yeah, I think he was bullshitting in this interview. Like he was just. No, I chilling. think it was a curated yeah. environment. And I think. This is a this is Kendrick Brent. He's not gonna give you anything outside of like what he wants to say in his music. You can't read through that. What he just said. You can't. Oh, you read through it. Let me hear. He summarized basically like, yo, I keep I like to keep it accountable. Not like us means everybody who can't keep it accountable is not like me because I like I I could keep it a buck. He's saying, yo, for everything that we that I know Drake to be, he don't do that. Yeah, that's basically what he was saying. I agree with that. I agree with that. And it was it was kind of like a clever way to not just make it about Drake. Because anyone who asks that question, you think the first thing he going to say is, well, you know, Drake not like me. <laughs> Whole time is like, nah, it's, it's metaphors as to why I yeah. believe that he's not like me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I'm not mad at that. He was talking about ayahuasca and shit and how he hasn't done it, even though he prescribed it for Drake. Yeah, again, <laughs> I, I just feel like we could have dug a little bit deeper, have we? And it's great that we even get to hear from him. But again, we know why we're hearing from him because he's getting in preparation to perform at the Super Bowl. Yep. Um, it's been speculated that he has an album coming. The Grammys is coming. Oh, he's coming. coming off one of his biggest songs ever. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense that we are going to hear from him a little bit more. We're going to see him just like we saw Usher for a year straight when he was leading up to the yeah. Super Bowl. Yep. And the year before that, whoever it was, like Rihanna. we're going to see these people. Like we saw the Rihanna ad. We haven't seen Rihanna since. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the Super Bowl leads for a rollout, and these artists are gonna give us little trinkets of content up until, up until that point. And then sure. after the Super Bowl, I'd be really surprised, really surprised if we continue to see Kendrick Lamar, right? Like after the Super Bowl, a month, two, three months after nah, the Super Bowl. Nah, you're gonna see him. He's gonna tour. And, and, and I don't. You're gonna see him. He's gonna tour. Is that seeing him? Oh, absolutely. Is it? He had one of the highest grossing hip hop tours of all time for with sure. Mr. Morale and the Big Stuppers. And that was visible. That was seen. For the most part, when people are on tour, you see it. Okay. When the big right. when the big wigs, J. Cole, Drake, all yeah, of them, yeah, yeah, Nicki Minaj. She I on tour right it. now. I see it every freaking week. Okay. Yeah, I can you, see you that. See it, yeah. Um while we're speaking about journalism, I do want to get your thoughts really, really quick. Stephen A. Smith, um, he sat down with Jalen Brown. Point of uh, shooting guard, I'm sorry, shooting guard from the Boston Celtics. Yeah. Um, Jalen Brown is a very, very intelligent, smart man. Um, My goat. A part of <laughs> his knock coming into the NBA, they said he was too smart to be an NBA player. Yeah. Like he has a very high IQ. Um, and, and he wouldn't listen and to coaches. Of, a lot of different like accomplishments. I what? watched a video about this. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. A, yeah he's a lot really of, smart. He's a scholar. Yeah, definitely. Who, a scholar. Who just happens to play yeah. basketball. He went, he, went to, he went to Cal Berkeley. <laughs> mm hmm. And if you know about Cal Berkeley, you need to be smart to be a bit. <laughs> <Facts>. <laughs> really, really intelligent, brother. Um, but he sat down with Stephen A. Smith. Mm -hmm. And as we know, a lot of these journalists and, and pundits, especially in sports, they have a lot of sources. And sometimes to protect their sources, they'll say, hey, this is an unnamed source, an anonymous source, but it's credible, but it's anonymous, <laughs> has told me whatever it is about the person that they're speaking to. Um, and... Stephen A. Smith has been notorious for doing this um, because he feels like he has such, not he feels, he does have a wide uh, network of sources, yeah. different organizations. He's been around the NBA for 30 plus years. He's an, so he he's has an those relationships. He's, he's an, an insider. He's been an insider, yeah. reporter, all of these things. He's been in the locker room. Absolutely. Um, you know his story, well documented. Mm-hmm. So when people give him information, he also has the largest sports show in media for the last 10 years. He'll tell you every time First he opens his mouth. Been number one. Shout out to Stephen A for that. So he comes with a large yeah. platform. And when you're reporting on athletes, which are also human beings, um, saying unnamed sources when reporting on somebody can seem like you are avoiding accountability. 
Um, and so Jalen Brown had the opportunity to sit down with Stephen A. Smith and he pressed him on his unnamed sources mm -hmm. and asked him about why he feels comfortable reporting on players and saying, hey, this is an unnamed source and I cannot give you where this information came from, but I'm talking shit about you. How do y'all feel about unnamed sources? And we don't have to stay here. Hmm. Um, I, I, it's, it's tough because an unnamed source doesn't mean it's not true. Mm -hmm. And if you are an insider and you want to continue to get inside information, you know, I, you know what? I guess it's really dependent on what your place is, right? Like, what do you do? Right. If you are an NBA insider, I don't expect for you to reveal the secrets of the people who are telling you things, because like you already announced, first take is number one for a reason. It's because for the entertainment and maybe the things that you cannot get from other shows or inside information that you can't get from other shows. Right. Like um, who's a new guy that just signed there? Oh, fuck, I forget his name. He does a 12 p.m. show. Uh, got a hundred million dollars. What's his name? White guy. Used to play football. Kelsey. No, 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 not Kelsey. Oh, Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee, right? Pat McAfee. He's another one on there, Reggie, right? And he's an insider. Mm -hmm. He used to, he's a former NFL player. They keep certain things close to their chest because they want to continue to get more information. And right? be trusted. And be trusted. So I'm not mad at that. If I'm Jalen Brown, though, I can understand as to, especially if it's true. And that's why I know maybe some of these things but are. Well, I'm listening. That's, I'm, a, that's, a, that's a big if, though, because you could say something off a hunch. And just say an unnamed source and then still have it be counted as a credible... I no, but then that's not credible then. If it's just like a hunch. That's why it's like, it all depends on this whole unnamed yeah. sources, like secret sources thing. It all depends on the integrity of the journalist. Mm -hmm. So if Stephen A. Smith is a good journalist, like a true... We literally just talked about this like five minutes ago. If yeah. he's like for real, for real, like he's sticking to the code of ethics and his source is for real yeah. and he's not lying, then yes, I really do think that the source should remain anonymous because it's also like a safety thing with anonymous sources. Like mm -hmm. if you out them, then they're just, people are going to be attacking them out for blood. And like sometimes an unnamed source is the really big key to unlocking like a huge story. And it's like, I will tell you this if I'm, if I remain anonymous. Mm -hmm. So it's like, it all depends on like how good the journalist is at their job. How and then if you're, if you're very good at your job, then yes, you can always use um, unnamed sources. But if you're just bullshitting, if you're just like a blogger and you're like making shit up yeah. and then you're like saying things like, oh, my unnamed source said this. Like, of course, people are going to get annoyed of that. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is what Alex said, like, oh, especially if it's true, then that would annoy me. But I'm like, that's all the more reason to keep a source anonymous, though, if the mm -hmm. story is that ass. Mm -hmm. yeah. And not for nothing, especially in sports, you could tell when some shit is true, even when it wasn't announced from the player because of the way they react mm -hmm. and what happens after. So, you know what, Savon, in sports, I'm not mad at that. Okay. I'm not mad at that. You know, for the most part, I think that's another reason why these athletes who are still playing are creating their own platforms and podcasts, things of that nature, because they don't have a voice, right? Mm -hmm. So now they're looking for other entities to do that at. So in sports, I'm not mad at that. When it comes to just more personal matters, yeah, it's a bit weird. Mm -hmm. It's it's a bit weird because again, you don't know if that person is credible or not. Yeah. With the sports pundit, we have a track record and history of what they said. Yeah. And wait, we can keep that. So wait, Jalen Brown, he was like, was he like, oh, who is your source? Like basically. Yeah, he, like asked, yeah, he was asking. He straight up asked him. And he wouldn't give it. What was the story about? Like, what do you guys know that? Or it just like, in what general. What was he referencing? It, yeah. it was last season. Um Jalen Brown took a stance against Nike, which is obviously a big uh, corporation, big yeah. supporter of the NBA. Yeah. And he just, he didn't align with how they treated Kyrie Irving. Mm -hmm. And he also just didn't align for some of the things that they stood for. Um, so Probably part of the reason why he didn't play on the Olympic team either. Yeah. There's a lot of people who speculated him speaking out against Nike is why he wasn't on the Olympic team. Very odd when you just came off of a championship mm -hmm. and like won the MVP. Yeah. Like, you're kind of a shoe and you're one of the best players in the world. Um, so he, he probably should have been there. But the politics behind him versus Nike um, created a lot of narratives around his name saying he's uh, hard to work with. He's arrogant. That's, that's always the one. Um, that's always he, the one. He's, he's, they just kind of created a narrative around his name. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people kind of connected that to his beef with Nike. Yeah. And because it's the NBA, because Stephen A does have... So, so much credibility in the NBA and reporting on the NBA, he was kind of reporting and saying, hey, my sources are telling me that Jalen Brown is just an asshole. 
And he's uh, arrogant, and, and that's the okay, other see, side. That's context. That's what I'm saying. Okay, 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 okay. Why? Who's your source? Okay, and, I get. Okay, so I thought you were talking about yeah. like if an athlete was like Stephen A. Smith. Who is the source that told you about my baby mama or something? <laughs> so then I would be like Stephen A. Smith. Please don't reveal that source because then mm. they're gonna be attacking this lady or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like that, I uh, like. I really feel like she should remain a Jane Doe. You know. Yeah. But in this situation, Jalen Brown's like, "Yo, that is not true. You know, they're conspiring against me." Who told you this? Who's your source? Mm-hmm. Like, I understand why he asked that, though. Yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not yeah. mad at, at, at why he asked. Uh-huh. But you know, sometimes sources doesn't mean it's a it's a fact, that's right? What that, and that's what that's what I'm saying. I see what you're saying, right? Yeah, like, yeah. so let me add to that, right? If I'm Stephen A. Smith, I'm telling you what I believe to be fact because I believe this person isn't lying to me. Mm-hmm. But we all have different experiences with everyone. It might be could be a dude that met Savon feel a different way than uh, how another dude feel about how he met him, mm-hmm. and vice versa when it comes from me or you or Reggie. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's tough with, with with certain things. Everybody yeah. has different experiences with different people. You know, and then it doesn't help because a lot of people accuse Stephen A. Smith of being a company man. For sure, <laughs> a lot of people accuse him of being a brown nose. A lot of people accuse him of being an Uncle Tom. <laughs> yeah, I see. A Uncle lot of Tom people shit. accuse him of being a uh, ass kisser. A lot of people Wait, accuse really? him. Yeah, yeah, these are things. These, like these are real narratives about yeah. Stephen A. Smith. Yeah. So when you have people who seem to be of the company of the industry, again, ESPN in bed with the NBA, NBA in bed with Nike. It's all you know. These 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 big corporations. They control everything. They run everything. It also kind of questions Stephen A.'s authenticity with him being a quote unquote. Company man. real nig, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. You already so, said it. No, 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 no. I ain't yo. Right. <laughs> we we start again. All right, we start <laughs> over. It's a new day. But there's a lot of people questioning um, his authentic authenticity within. You know, just just being a black man in the media in his position, right? Like, are y'all yeah. familiar with Jason Whitlock? Probably I am, not. I am very familiar. He with Jason he speaks Whitlock. to Stephen A's credibility or lack thereof and, every single week, and we and we could do the <laughs> same about Jason Whitlock. No, for sure, <laughs> and, 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 and that's the craziest part about this. Shit. Everybody has a different experience mm-hmm. yeah. with everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We could do the same with Mr. Jason. Oh, uh, I want. I remember Stephen A had a classic rant. About Jason Whitlock. I watched you it. You fat piece you of shit. shit. Yo, Damn. the most unhinged you I've ever him seen. Up. You fraud The most up. unhinged you I've ever seen Stephen A. Legendary. On his own podcast. You. Yeah, yeah. You. It was crazy. You fat piece of shit. Legendary. Legendary. Yeah, he's a legend for that. Um, It, it just kind of got me thinking about, and real quick, I just wanted, did y'all really know the extent of The Rock's beef with Vin Diesel? I don't know anything about The Rock's beef, nah. nigga. <laughs> Wait, really? I just knew that they've kind of always been, it was, to me, it was like a comparison thing where they're like kind of similar and people kept pitting them against each other. And I knew they were beefing, especially it wasn't, weren't they both part of the Fast and Furious franchise Mm -hmm. and shit? Yeah. Vin Diesel tried to sun the rock. (laughs) I mean, how? if it's my franchise, like. He was the first (laughs) bald, multicultural (laughs) superstar. (laughs) Bald and buff. He was the first one. Vin? So he said, Vin Diesel. That's Think what he about said? It. Yeah, that's what he claimed that title. <laughs> what? And this then, is a real beef. Bro, this is a real beef. And then if you go to the box box office numbers, okay. his box office numbers are better than The Rock's all time. I mean, they would Wait, be. Wait, why? Mine really? would be too if I'm putting out the same movie every year. <laughs> Ooh. But, but a lot of people would know that. A lot of people would think that. <laughs> A lot of people wouldn't no, look at Vin Diesel in The Rock and say, oh, would, they're in it. The fact that, that fr- yeah, no. you're right. But yeah. that franchise, most people should know how lucrative that franchise is. But that's not just, it's wait, not just so, that franchise. Wait, he said, huh? wait, Vin Diesel saying, I'm the, nigga fir- I'm the first bald and buff movie star or first <laughs> bald and buff famous superstar? <laughs> wait. Because didn't The Rock come first? <laughs> Name another movie that Vin Diesel been in. Not for real. The Pacifier. Oh, I like the pacifier. That was mad long ago. Yo, and I'm not even a movie girl, and I'm proud of myself. But see, if you that think about it, ago, he did the pacifier. Uh-huh. The Rock did the Tooth Fairy. <gasps> oh, you put two. You doing the it math? Gets deep. You got to do the science you on these the things. Math. You doing the math? You got to do this. Okay. And Wait, so which one did better? You carried the one. Okay. <laughs> don't forget mm-hmm. Groot. Oh yeah, Groot. Don't forget who Groot is. Yeah. Groot. No, not good. That was the complete. Oh, my, 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 no. I do. No. That's man. what that nigga be saying, no, though. No, he doesn't. They be like, hey, say what's up. Good. <laughs> he doesn't say it in that tone at all. Good. There we go. There we go. Right. Groot is Vin Diesel. So, oh, so even better. 
So, so they gave this nigga one line. <laughs> and he's killing it in for a, a box whole, office. For a whole movie. <laughs> so there, there was like real nah, smoke. No, nah, no, nah, that one don't count, boy. <laughs> yeah, I seen nah, this. I seen Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh-huh. All he do is good, 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 good. With, with you, di- you with can pay me with different emphasis. I promise you, you could pay me. And I could get that done. But I'm just telling you, they they, they got real bald beef. Wait, That's I just crazy. have That's the crazy. the numbers. I was just so curious. So, so the Tooth Fairy with The Rock did 112 million, and this is Google guys. Sorry, 112? If I'm wrong. Okay, 112. Okay, okay, okay. No, the pacifier. What the pacifier did? 198 million. Oh, is beef. I'm telling you. I you know. And Wait, who do we like more? I though? know. I, you know, I stand with bald. So I'm <laughs> riding with bald. You have to pick both. one. You can't. can't do the J. Cole thing. Yeah, you got to pick one. I got it. I'm, nah, I'm J. Cole today. Cole. I want to nah. be Cole for real. Nah, because one. they made up. So if they can make up, oh, yeah, I don't they did. have yeah, to yeah, pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Because The Rock, he boycotted Fast and Furious. He did. You don't remember when he fried yeah, up Tyrese and all that, yeah. these guys? Like he was, I'm never returning to the I Fast like, and Furious franchise. I ain't like franchise how he did that though. Ever again. I don't now. like how he did that because Fast and Furious was already lit before you. Facts. I ain't like that he was doing that. But see, he had he I got humbled. Like he got humbled real quick. That's a good like conversation. That. He got humbled. He did. After he declared smoke against the Fast and Furious franchise, he went on to kind of flop a bit. Okay. <gasps> he entered his flop era. He entered his flop era. <laughs> After he entered the flop era, he wanted to come back, and guess what? He ran right back to Vinny. Right back to Vinny. He announced that he of was coming back <laughs> to the Fast and Furious family See? to kind of get his profile back up. So I just wanted it to be a full circle moment. I know a lot of people was, you hmm. know, kicking the rocks back in, and yeah, I didn't know if y'all knew about that bald beef. <laughs> Thank you so much for informing. Yeah, for sure. I have to <laughs> just side with Dwayne the Rock Johnson everything because he's a Taurus. Mm, I just like him now. No, what, what, but what's Vinny? What is Big Ju- Vinny. He's July eighteenth. What is that? Leo. Sounding Leo-ish. Leo ish. Leo. I think that's Cancer. Is Leo or July? Cancer? Yeah, it might be a Cancer. July eighteenth. Yeah, because Leo might be the end of July. Type shit. Yeah, he's a Cancer. He's a Cancer. Whoa, Taurus and Cancer is a good bestie pair though. <laughs> so that's why they made up. Okay, there you go. Amen. See that? <laughs> that's why they made up. <laughs> Just like Drake and Future will. Full circle. <laughs> Had to pull a little button on that, you know. Full circle. We <laughs> shall see. Anything we else shall. y'all want to get off while we here? Uh, we got time. No. Nah. I got one thing for you. And we don't got to say hello. I just love how Alex will always serve all communities. You are the man of all people. What I do today. What I do today, yo. The big C on a red hat. (laughs) (laughs) This is for clientele, yo. First you throw it was Chick fil A. You like my my fit today? Why do you keep mentioning his hat? First it was Chick fil A. (laughs) Wait. I think you like my fit today. I think he's going to say the rest of your outfit. I threw that shit off. I'm just saying. Big C on a red hat. Yeah. That's strategic marketing. I like what you you serving all with the bases. Some, some stars. And yeah. we put the we put the red light behind them and all with that. Some stars That's next it. To it. I just like I Set like tripping? how you did that. You got a in your back pocket? <laughs> I do not. Okay. <laughs> I like how you did that. Thanks, man. Remember Appreciate when it's time you. to go out. Yeah. Go out with a bang. <laughs> Just go out with a bang. It's been the Needs and No Podcast. We appreciate y'all. We love y'all. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, give us some love in the fucking YouTube comments. Yeah. <gasps> oh. Patreon. What up, shout out to Mandy. All right. You better stop. Always got to shout out, man. Yeah, you I, wanted, I wanted to tell shout out to Mandy. <laughs> I, was, I was with Mandy today. She says hi, guys. Oh. Everybody to listen to. She said hi. I'm sorry to. That was like a perfect outro, but I have to like mention something just because you reminded me. People were upset that I just like slid out last week. Oh, facts. <laughs> They were like, "Yo, who is this black? <laughs> this is not Reggie." Okay, because okay, now let's 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 get some feedback. You know, this is good. Like feedback from the comments. Okay, guys, like I didn't just like okay, I saw one narrative where they said they thought that I slid out because the topics that you guys discussed without me, they were like Reggie didn't want to discuss those topics. <laughs> So Reggie it was wasn't so that it, I had a work emergency, guys. That's <laughs> genuinely why I had Facts. to slide off for the past for the last like thirty minutes or so. So would you guys prefer that if I just you know made it a smooth transition and didn't interrupt the conversation, or should I announce that I'm leaving next time? And, Please leave in the comments. And one thing I realized about our listeners, they don't play about you, Reggie. No, they don't. Not at, at all. all. They don't. So, like at all. You are well loved. Very much so. Yo, they there is no play. more Vaseline in that. Nice. Nice. Why are you still trying to use it? There is nothing left. 
got, I got something in the little corner here for you. There is nothing left. Say, bro, I got a corner with your you name on it right now. Rubbing plastic on your finger, bro. Come here. You say you want some, right? Come why, here. How, where does it go? Why you keep licking your lips to take it off? Just leave it on. Oh, my fault, ashy lips. I ain't know you walked well, around say, like that. No, I'm saying. I ain't know you look. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. You don't have to disrespect his lips. Can <laughs> we see your lips? My lips Wait, is good, what? baby. All right, pause. My fault. Feel me? My fault. Y'all got me. Y'all, y'all got me my fouling out today. My lips, my lips <laughs> moisturized, baby. Mm-hmm. This week. Mm-hmm. I don't oh, know what's mm-hmm. going on with y'all, man. But yeah, if you made it this far in the podcast, there's no reason you haven't liked, comment, subscribe. We do see the community mm-hmm. growing. Thank y'all. Like Reggie said, y'all can find us over on Patreon. If you also are a creative in the tri-state area, I probably should have did this at the top of the episode. Oh, but we shit. do have a new studio. Yes, our we do. home. Yes, we Need do. to know studios. Y'all can catch all that information in the links below in Alex's DMs. No. Whatever you could. <laughs> No, yes. no, stay out of there. <laughs> Wherever well, you can out. reach us, <laughs> uh, you can come there. book with us. All right, <laughs> we appreciate y'all. We thank y'all. We love y'all, and we will be back again next week. Peace. Okay.